Well, this is uh, Devontae sweeping left. He's got an opening, has the first down. Stiff arm pushed out of bounds to 31. Giving six or seven more, and that'll move the chain. Southeastern will have it first and 10th to 32 yard line. So Devontae Williams getting in the act here early on. Well, Stephen F. Austin, Frank Self will talk about it, kind of switch between a three down front and a four down front, going four down press corners on the outside. Two high safeties. Lions will go under center, eye formation. They'll motion De Blazo left side. He'll pitch left. This is Devontae looking for an opening. And uh, looked like he had a little bit of a crease, kind of tiptoed his way. And finally puts his head down, picks up a couple. It's going to bring up second down. We'll call it nine. They'll see a gain of one on the play. And listen, right there, Mark, Devontae gets one yard. But we've talked about him a little bit this year where on those kind of plays, when it's kind of bottled up, he's tried to kind of bounce it even further out and give ground. He doesn't there, and he just gets up the field and gets something instead of that maybe three or four-yard loss that he's had when he's made a mistake earlier this year. So a good run by him there to at least get something out of that. Second down to nine. Lions will go from the gun to throw. On the out route, Devontae's got it. He's dropping his track. Short gain on the play. He's going to bring up a third and about five. We'll see where they'll spot it. They'll mark it back to the 36-yard line. They'll bring up third and six. SFA does a good job there covering most stuff down the field, and he has to check it down, and Devontae's able to get, you know, four yards out of it. So a third and manageable here for Southeastern. Lions offensively, Drew Jones, Jarius Gooch, Pat Allen, Alfred Beverly, and Rendon Miles' character up front. Marcus Cooper checks in. He'll go in motion left side on the slant. It's caught. That's right at the stick. C.J. Turner's got it. I think that's going to be enough to move the chains, and it is. Brevin Randall on the coverage, but he got inside. And just enough for the Lions first down to the 42. Just underway. Glad you're with us here on the Lions Southeastern Sports Radio Network. 9-16 and counting here in this first quarter. No score. Stephen F. Austin got the opening kickoff, picked up a first down, then a sack and a big loss. Uh, did a man. Lions able to get the football here on this series is Vontae Williams again. Stiff arm puts a man on the ground, gets to the outside, pushed out of bounds at the 47-yard line, giving five on first down. Southeastern continuing, Robbie, to take that little dump down pass. Yeah. Little swing pass, bubble pass out of the backfield. What SFA's giving you, and they're taking advantage of it. And, you know, Devontae right there with a great stiff arm, and he's really good in the open field, Mark. You know, he's a guy with a lot of elusiveness and a lot of good vision, especially on the perimeter. He does a good job getting up the field there. Lions are second and four. Devontae, a big part of this Lion passing game. Two wides right, one left to throw. All out blitz. Cross the middle. He's got it. J.J. Connor. that'll be a first down into Lumberjack territory to the 38-yard line. The Southeastern here early on finding SFA and man coverage and exploiting it. And we talked about Devontae Williams came into this football game with 26 catches. On the year, giving three already. Uh, he's up to 29, and some of the most production we've seen from a running back in a long time. Lions will go under center with a wing. Marcus Cooper in motion. He'll get it on the end around. Looks for a block. He's got the corner. Gets another block from Austin Mitchell and picks up nine. Down to the Lumberjack 29-yard line. Helmet comes off. Looks like Austin Mitchell will have to come off the field for one play. Lions did a good job. Back to the 30. Lions did a good job, Mark, of trying to keep Ooh. SFA off balance there. They go under center at a situation where they kind of had that handoff up the middle or they've kind of done that pitch out of. Right there, they do the little sweep around the outside. He's able to get nice yardage, second down and two for the Lions, all the way down to the SFA 30-yard line. Shotgun formation, two wides to the left. This will be Devontae Williams. He's got a big opening left side. Gets a block from Ed McGee. Across the 15, down to the 10. Inside the 10, out of bounds, and the 9. So Southeastern running and throwing the football very well here early on. Guys, Robbie talked about it earlier about the wind, that Southeastern's going straight into the teeth of that wind on this possession. It's been a lot of running the football and short passing that's been efficient, not really taking a lot of shots downfield, just efficient on this first possession. First down and goal at the SFA nine-yard line. Shotgun formation. Devontae motions left side, two wides to the right. It's going to be Devontae straight ahead. He's got an opening inside to five. Powers his way down to the two. Maybe the two and a half is going to bring up second down and goal. Southeastern number one in the league in red zone offense. And 
and they've punched it in the end zone more often than not. Lions have only attempted eight field goals this year. With the way this drive's gone, Mark, it'll be interesting to see if Coach Selfo did what he did last week where he alternates quarterbacks and gives Cole Kelly the next series. This has been a great drive by the Lions. And here's a throw back corner of the end zone. Want to go to Austin Mitchell. Was tied up over there. Falls incomplete. will bring up third and goal. Austin Mitchell on the coverage for SFA. That looks like Eli Jones. That corner is going to bring up third and goal. Interesting to see what Greg Stevens and Frank Selfo do here. Do you look at this as four down territory as Cole Kelly comes into the football game. Lions will cluster four wides to the right. Tight end to the left. Ball set on the left hash. He's got good numbers out to the Kelly right. Kelly with his first snap. He's going to sweep it left side. He's got a big opening and a big block over there. And that was Pat Allen who opened the way to the end zone for Cole Kelly. As Southeastern drives it. The leap to the field, puts it into the end zone, and leads it six to nothing. And Allen, you're right down there. That's all Cole Kelly running the football right up the left side. As SFA had the numbers over there, he just put his head down and got to the end zone. Well, guys, I thought it was a great play design. Southeastern put a dime into the high side of the field, making uh, SFA really shift that way. They pulled a guard around, and Cole Kelly, just uh, bigger than anybody SFA has on defense, was able to put his head down and get into the end zone. 12 plays, 85 yard drives. Cole Kelly from Three yards out, Bryce Broussard in for the PAT. Jacob Williams in a bad snap. Williams uh, fumbles the football around and finally gets him on the ground. That'll be a missed PAT. Could have been returned for points for SFA, but credit Jacob Williams for making the tackle. And 6-0 uh, six with 6.37 to play first quarter. Lions had a bad snap on the uh, punt last week against Houston Baptist. Uh, another bad low snap by... Lion uh, specialty unit. So with that, Mark, uh, Lions take a 6 0 lead. We'll take a break and come back to the Gateway Ford Broadcast booth in the Southeastern Sports Network. What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose Teammates for Life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. drive chasing Virgil five of six 35 yards on the drive but it was Devontae Williams 39 yards rushing also 15 yards receiving on three catches yeah I mean it was about as perfect as you can get opening defensive series opening offensive series the only day after was the miss PAT with the Lions jump out to a six nothing lead and you got a team who's we talked about this before in these games you got a team where you're uh, uh, kind of questioning themselves you want to jump out to a big league early especially when they're on the road Coming back across the 25, upended there to 26 for SFA is Bentley and down the coverage, Justin Douglas. Freshman out of Atlanta for Southeastern and SFA will have it for their second offensive series of this football game. They drove it out to midfield, had a first down and a big uh, loss on a reverse. Isaac Adeyemi Berglund with two tackles for loss also had a sack on second down and 
SFA had to punt it away, and they'll have the football again. Trey Self back on the field. He'll operate from the left half. Pistol formation. Slot goes in motion left side. He'll hand it away, and there's Xavier Lewis and Josh Carr to shut down the run for no gain. Actually, they're going to let the pile continue to move forward. Should have been forward progress three or four seconds ago, but they let it. Instead of a loss of a couple, it's a gain of one. They just kind of let that play go a lot longer than it should have. Usually you see them in today's game, Mark, with injuries and things like that and concussions and things. They try to blow that whistle as quickly as they can. They let that one play out, and SFA gets an extra yard out of it. That's Josh McGowan who gets the start today instead of DeLeon Ward who's out once again. Here's a throw to the left side. It's caught. Justin Douglas strips the ball out, but it goes out of bounds, so that'll end up being a loss of yardage. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Actually, that's Dontrell Smith, the corner on that side. Actually, it was Alexis Ramos, excuse me, number 30. Looked like a 20. It was a Ramos on the strips uh, fumble. Here's a throw, and that's going to be picked off. Xavier Lewis has got it across midfield looking for a block, and he'll go down at the 40-yard line. Trey Self, who came into this ball game with nine interceptions, throws number 10, Xavier Lewis, just sitting back in his zone defense. Got the pick, Robbie Cooley returns on the it. field. Yeah, he, has a he almost First had one on the opening East. drive, Mark. It was a low throw. He was right there. He threw it right to Xavier, but it was kind of at his feet. He couldn't get that one. That's an over-the-shoulder catch. He has to reach out and get the football. Great job by him, and he gets up the field quickly, gets something out of it, and the Lions ready to strike again here as the offense comes on the field at the SFA 40-yard line. And Southeastern's fifth interception is a team second by the senior out of East St. John, Xavier Lewis. He and Philando Jordan each with two picks apiece. On first and ten, Jason Virgil back in the ball game from the right hash, double slot formation. This will be Lorenzo Nunez on the end of round, tries to get a stiff arm, breaks the tackle, cuts up field, turns inside the 35 down. We'll see where they spot it, the 33-yard line. So it looked like Lorenzo was going to be strung out, but had a nice stiff arm, got the defender on the ground. Robbie turned up field for positive yards. Yeah, two nice stiff arms, Mark, on these line opening drive positions. You saw Devontae with the big one on the first drive, and right there, Lorenzo coming off the left side of the line and uh, just fights forward and gets a nice gain on first down. Gain of seven, second down and three, double slot from the gun. Here's swing out left side. Devontae's got it, cuts it back inside, has the first down, reaches forward and dives to the 23. Gain of 10 for Devontae Williams, who has shown up strong here in this first quarter. Yeah, does a nice job there of, you know, knowing where he wants to go with the football quickly, he checks it out of there, and he's able to get a nice gain on first uh, first down again. The Lions uh, are up a second down and get the first down. Lions driving the football. SFA defensively, Ahmad Murray, Gary Sampson from right down the road in Covington. Taj Bakari and Marcus Mosley up front will set the rest of their starters momentarily. Under center is Virgil. He's going to play fake, looking. Wants to go on the out route. has got a wide open C.J. Turner. He's got it. Tries to shake a man and is taken down at the eight-yard line. C.J. Turner, the Lions' leading receiver, coming in, picks up his first catch of this football game. Just a good throw, Mark, on the out route. He tries to come back to the football, and that's one of those where you trust your wide receiver and you have that good rapport with him because he has to throw that before C.J. makes the break, and you see it in the NFL. You see it in college football all the time, and you trust it with that – uh, that feel you have for each other and how you want to run that route. He does a great job coming back to the football, making a catch line for the first and goal. 40-second catch of the year. Here's an end around to Ed McGee. The freshman out of Kentwood reaches for the goal line. He's in. Ed McGee with his first touchdown as a Southeastern Lion comes on the ground on the end around and Southeastern so far, Robbie, uh, very, very good football on both sides of the ball. Yeah, really good. They're just playing and clicking and making things happen and just like that, you have a 12-0 lead. They're going to try the PAT here to make it 13-0. Um, but uh, SFA, really no, just no answer right now on the defensive side of the football against Southeastern. Man, SFA is a young football team, and they've had a lot of injuries as well. Lost their leading receiver early in the year, Tamrick Pace. Uh, they've had a bunch of injuries even before the season started. Here's a clean snap and hold. Broussard. Knocks it through, and the Lions lead it 13-0, 3.53 to play. And we'll go ahead and take another quick timeout. Back in one minute, you're listening to Lions football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network.
What opportunity has Southeastern provided you that you will forever be thankful for? Southeastern's given me the education I need for my future. Whether or not I go pro, I know I'm going to be successful. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are Good since the last time we were in Strawberry Stadium. Yeah, very workmanlike uh, performance so far for Southeastern early on in this first quarter. And right now, obviously, Coach Greg Stevens likes the perimeter matchups that Southeastern has. They're trying to get a lot of their runners out on the perimeter and making SFA's DBs try to come up and tackle. And they haven't done that so far here in the first quarter in Southeastern with two quick possessions and two quick touchdowns. Yeah, and SFA with a young football team. They play a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores underclassmen don't have a lot of experience they have a lot of talent so the future certainly looks bright for the lumberjacks and that's what colby carthel the head coach is looking forward to but they've been in every football game to this point here's a high hanging kick's gonna check up at the tight end at the 20 yard line he's gonna go down to 26 so southeastern goes with a pooch and will douglas down on the tackle for the lions yes they've done a pretty good job on the initial kickoff returns mark getting pretty decent returns out of it so they go with the pooch there kicking it back into this breeze and uh, SFL come on with some of their worst starting field position of the game. That was Carson Spence on the return for SFA. Trey Self has his offense back on the field. He'll line up two wides to the right one to the left. They'll operate out of the pistol from the left hash lines in that four man front. Self calls for it wants to throw quick. He's got a man. He'll be wrapped up for a short game. That will give him six or seven. That was Quintavian Borders. Stopped by Chantre Spates, giving him seven on first down. Bring up second down and three. Lions lead it 13-0. 33 to 28 and counting here in the first quarter. SFA with the football, their third possession of this football game. They punted and turned it over on interception. Here's a handoff backside, running right into Trey Drake, and he stopped short of the first down, giving two. And on the carry for SFA, that was Thomas Hutchings. Nice job by Trey Drake, freshman out of Hanley, Alabama, Roanoke, Alabama, Hanley High School. He's played well in the after the injury to Mike Mason. Third down and short, third and one. Lumberjacks need to get to the 35. Lions with four down. Pistol formation, wing slot to the right. Tight end set to the right. Is that a tight end? a tight end. They'll motion running back out of the backfield and no backs. Now Colby Carthel wants a timeout. Didn't like what he saw. I think there was some confusion, so he'll take the timeout. timeout. We'll keep it right here, 2.38 to play Boston. first quarter. They're first. Fans, don't forget Gateway Ford and Ponch Tool, our sponsor for the Gateway Ford broadcast booth. They offer sales, service, and collision repair. They've been serving the North Shore since 1983. You can check them and their inventory out at gatewayford.net. And don't forget the end of the year sales at Gateway Ford. Go check out the new 2019 Ford Rangers 0% financing and the all new 2019 Ford F-150. All the deals you can get at Gateway Ford through the end of the year is the end of the year sales event at Ford at Pontchartou, Louisiana, Gateway Ford, sponsor of the Gateway Ford broadcast booth. Mark, uh, taking a look at some of our uh, scores from around the Southland Conference. All afternoon games in the league today. Central Arkansas on top of UCA, 24 to 10. That game is almost at halftime, 3.06 to go in the second quarter. Incarnate Word leads Nichols State, 6-0, 7.25 to go in the first quarter. And Northwestern State on top of McNeese, 7-6. Uh, Northwestern is driving. They have it first and 10 at the Cowboy 20 with 11.04 to go in the first quarter. I'll tell you, Northwestern may be playing as well as anybody in the league the last uh, two or three weeks. They've had a couple of close losses. I know they lost a one-point game at UCA. Uh, 
another t uh, they won a big one last week at UIW playing well again today. So Northwestern certainly under Brad Laird getting things turned around. Didn't let that really slow start uh, get yeah. them down. They're playing well late. And that's a big thing for the – yeah, go ahead, Alan. Hey, start. guys, I was going to just point out a, an interesting tidbit about the stadium. I don't know if it got enough publicity, but Tropical Storm Olga certainly did a lot of damage uh, to our area. And, and actually the sound system in our in our stadium was blown out by Tropical Storm Olga. And they have – if you look down on the sidelines, uh, there's actually uh, some portable speakers they brought in. So uh, Southeastern will be upgrading and getting new uh, speakers here in the stadium. But for right now, uh, hopefully they're going to have them installed for Nick but the yeah. tropical storm did blow out our, our sound system in the stadium. And I saw one of the sound technicians in the elevator on the way up, and he, he said they had to run out all over town and get every speaker system they could find. And so hats off to the local community uh, for loaning Southeastern all of these speakers so they could have sound here in Strawberry Stadium. Third down and one. Lions put five at the line of scrimmage. He'll turn, hand it straight ahead, and he keeps the football. Self does, dies for the first down. And he kept the football. Lions... Had the tailback wrapped up in the backfield, but Trey Self able to dive forward, get across the 35 to the 36. SFA moves the chains for their second first down of this first quarter. And, Mark, you talking about Northwestern. Uh, that's a team you want to start playing good because it's going to help Southeastern. You've already beaten them this year. Uh, they got to play still play Sam Houston State. They're playing McNeese, who's kind of still in the conference mix as well with two losses. Uh, they're a team that you want to see play good as the season goes on. First and 10 from the 36, Self drops the throw. Looking, looking. Pocket breaks down, now he's flushed to the right. Lions giving chase, now dumps it away and it's caught, but diving, that's gonna be a short gain of one. And coming up with a catch was, that is uh, Remy Simmons on the catch. Gain of two officially, bring up second down and eight. And it's a jumbled Southland Conference, no question about it. Central Arkansas in first place, 4-1. and one. That'll be the Lions' opponent next week in Conway. They're on top of Lamar, 24-10. Second down and eight, man in motion left side. Self will drop the throw. Lions rush five on the slant. He's got a man open on a curl right in front of Chantres Spates, and that'll be a first down. That'll move the chains, and SFA in the Lion territory for the first time. Lions ran a little blitz there, Mark. He almost blitzed two guys in the same gap, and if he comes underneath there on the inside of the blitz, he might have gotten to the quarterback to get after for pressure. But uh, good throw, good catch, and SFA with their best offensive production of the game so far as we're near the end of the first quarter. Montavian Borders on the reception. First and ten. Be a handoff left side. And that is shut down. Short gain over there by Thomas Hutchings on the carry. Trey Drake. On the tackle. His second tackle this ball game. Second down and eight from the Southeastern 48. Under a minute to play first quarter. Lions on top. They lead it 13-0. SFA with their best penetration of this first quarter. Lions will go to a three down front on second down and eight. Ray will drop the throw. Four-man rush. Has a man wide open. Catches it. Lines back in the soft zone, and that'll be another first down down to the 30-yard line. That's uh, the big tight end, Allen Arkley. Uh, 6'4", 245. Southeastern, again, just in the soft zone. Arkley's able to find a, a hole, and Self able to find him uh, after a, just a three-man rush. That'll be the final play of the first quarter. We'll switch ends of the field. Southeastern leads at 13 0. Back in one minute, you're listening to Lions football on the, the Southeastern end Sports Radio. For the first Network. quarter. Check out the dirt road weeknights.
Happy to have you with us here from high on top Strawberry Stadium. Go down to Alan Waddell, who's on the sidelines. And uh, Alan, SFA with their biggest production of this day on this drive right here as they have pushed the football uh, the deepest they've moved into line territory Yeah, you today. got to tip your hat to Trey Self. You know, he played well here on this possession, coming back after that, that turnover on the last possession. Uh, he stood in there, been under some pressure, and delivered a few strikes. So see if the Southeastern defense can hold strong. And, and guys, I'll tell you, down here on that field, uh, the wind is certainly a factor. It's blowing pretty stiff, and the, the shadows are creeping out, almost covering the entire stadium now. It's, uh, the temperature's dropping, no doubt, in Hammond. Well, it's just... Go ahead, Mark. As we take a look at the first half stats, Southeastern six first downs to four. Lions rushed it eight times for 65 yards. SFA eight times for seven. Chase and Virgil seven out of eight for 60 yards to the air. Lions have 125 yards of total offense on 16 snaps. SFA and Trey Self six of eight and one interception for 53 yards. They snapped it 16 times for 60 yards in the first half. Well, you get that first quarter break to kind of draw something up here. And Lions look really do dominant, and they've brought some pressures that's gotten to the quarterback today. See if they need to try to do that here in the second quarter. The deepest penetration for SFA threatening to cut this lead in half. 13-0 Lions lead it. Lumberjacks driving first and 10 at the southeastern 30. Ball spotted in the middle of the field. Pistol formation, slot left, single wide out right. They'll hand the ball straight ahead. This is the big tailback, pushes forward for about two or three. Boy, physical run by Josh McGowan, who picks up four. Again, he was kind of bottled up uh, initially, but uh, that forward lean got him a couple of extra. Well, you think about it's probably back to the 23. You think about Texas Jennifer. high school football. You think about the good teams SFA's had over the last 10 years. You think about throwing the football. But it seems like SFA always has a really good back, Mark. You go back to, to Gus Johnson and – uh, the success he had leading into the playoffs in 2014. This young man here looks like he's going to be a good one when his time is done at Stephen F. Austin. Well, motion to empty formation. Three wides to the right. Self to throw. Lions come with pressure. Across the middle. Wide open. Nobody picked him up. The tight end, Arkley's, and that will be an easy touchdown for SFA. Caught the Lions and a man. Zero coverage blitz. And Arkley's uh, just went uncovered across the middle. And that'll be a touchdown, 27 yards, and SFA Guys, the, uh, on the board. The Southeastern coaching staff is going nuts down here, saying that that was not an eligible receiver. So I, I'm not sure what, what they saw, but uh, Coach Gidry and Coach Self are, are, are going berserk down here. Well, we certainly didn't see the formation. We have no benefit of replay here in our press box, so uh, can't really see that was correct or not. Extra point is up and through. So SFA puts a drive together, and they cut the lead to 13-7. to 14-16 to play in this first quarter. We'll go ahead and take a quick timeout. Back in one minute, you're listening to Lions Football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student-athletes, achieving success in the classroom, while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are... What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Mark Willoughby, Allen, Waddell, Robbie Rose back with you as we are back at Strawberry Stadium. 13-7 is your score. SFA put a nice drive together of their own. Uh, Trey Self to Allen Arkleys for 27 yards, nine plays, 75-yard drive for the Lumberjacks. And Frank Selfo not very happy, thought that there was an eligible receiver. Arkleys was ineligible, maybe covered up, but uh, to no avail. And SFA on the scoreboard. And Allen the, and Robbie, the uh, 
Speakers went out due to a possum. A possum got in the speakers and blew some wires and blew the speakers oh, out. That's a Louisiana problem there. <laughs> Alan, any more uh, clarification of? Uh, well, they're down here talking about it, and the, almost the entire coach staff was huddled up talking about it. And what their argument is is the back that came out of the backfield. They don't believe he ever got on the line, so that should have been an illegal formation. But the back judge, uh, somehow the back judge on the far side of the field came running in and said, "No, the back was on the line." So I, I don't know, but that's the that's the discussion down here. They felt like it was an illegal formation by SFA. Well, nonetheless, it's a touchdown, and SFA back in this one, 13-7, Lions. We'll drop off to Mitchell. He'll stand at his four-yard line. Kick is high, and this will be returnable. Mitchell from the six. Coming back toward the middle of the field. He's got some running room. He's one to break a tackle, and a flag comes down. Back at the 26-yard line. Seems like every time Austin Mitchell gets a nice return, a flag is thrown. This one's going to back the Lions up. That came from referee Ed Bourgeois, so this one will come back. Go back southeastern up somewhere inside their 20. Um, Personal foul. Illegal blindside block. Number 36 of the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Called the blindside block. We're seeing that call more and more. Uh, right, these 15 days. yards from the spot of the foul. That's going to be on Marcel Selman. So that will be half the distance. Southeastern will take over first and 10 at their own. Well, they're going to back it up some more. Back to the 10. So Southeastern will start this drive. Their 10-yard line after SFA went on a nine-play, 75-yard drive. Just trying to uh, see where the penalty's thrown, Mark, but they actually get it and they're respotting it now well, all the way. It's a half up. the distance penalty. They yeah. marked off all 15 yards. Now they put it at the 12. That was right in the congestion of where the Gunners came down to try to bust that wedge up. That's where they threw the penalty from. Here's a handoff to Marcus Cooper. He's strung out, and he's going to lose yardage. Actually breaks a tackle. is still on his feet. Now we'll go down. That'll be a loss of about five or six. So SFA all of a sudden starting to tighten up a little bit defensively. Cooper's going to lose five. He's going to bring up second and 15. So after you give up a nine-play 75-yard drive, guys, you certainly – don't want a three and out backed up in your own territory. Well, it's a situation here where Southeastern has to crowd. drive the football here. Second down and 15. Ball inside the 10 at the eight-yard line. Austin Mitchell, most and left center. It's a bad snap, and all of a sudden, Southeastern starting to self-destruct. It's like Jason just took his eyes off of it. Now it's going to be third and forever back at the two-yard line. So all of a sudden, the Lions going in the wrong direction. Mark, that ball was actually snapped while Chasen was looking over to the side. He wasn't ready for that snap. So something came. Uh, the, the snap count got thrown off right there on that play. Southeastern's got to get out to the 22 and a half to move the chain. So right here probably will they'll just run it out of the end zone, try to avoid a potential sack, or they'll try to go for it. Three wides left, one to the right in his own end zone. Virgil will throw, swings it out of the backfield. He's got Coop. He's got some running room. Tries to slip a tackle, gets across the 10, out to the 13. He'll give Austin Dunlap some punting room. Almost worked, Mark. He just kind of run that little, as you said, screenplay in there. And if, boy, he gets one more block, the Lions could have gotten that first down. But ultimately, it'll be a good stop by SFA to come back on the field after the scoring touchdown. And they get the uh, big stop there to get the football back here. And Austin Dunlap coming on for his first punt of the day. He has a big wind at his back, guys. Second leading. Punter in the conference at just under 44 yards of punt. Bentley back at his own 40, gets a clean snap, gets it away. It's a line drive. This is going to be easy return for Bentley. And uh, he's going to be strung out left side. Nice coverage on the play down to make the tackle. Let's see who that is. That is Lorenzo Nunez, and a flag comes down as well. So this, uh, instead of good field position at the 40, should back SFA up. Inside around the 30-yard line. Kind of a low kick mark, and I think SFA was uh... illegal block in the back. Number 31 of the return team. 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. Timeout. That'll move SFA back to their own 30-yard line to start this drive. And with that, we'll take a break and come back for more from the Gateway Ford Broadcast booth in the Southeastern Sports Network.
Support for this broadcast. What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. by a score of 13-7. Lions jumped on top early, 13-0 on their first two offensive possessions and uh, looked like they were firm control, but SFA able to mount a nine-play, 75-yard drive, punch one in the end zone on a 27-yard Trey Self to Allen Arkley's touchdown pass, and then Southeastern kind of self-destructed on the ensuing possession. Ended up backed up in their own end zone, uh, had to punt it away, and SFA comes on the field after a Penalty at their own 30. That's where we stand. All things considered, Mark, punting out of your own end zone is about as good as you can get with the penalty to start SFA this deep in their own territory. Number Jacks on the field. They'll go from the pistol double slot formation. Self looks across that lion defense. Three down front for Southeastern. Self to throw. They'll rush four. On the out route, that is caught. That'll be... Game of about eight, and I'll call it seven. They'll spot it at the 37-yard line. Trey Spann on the coverage. You can tell one of the adjustments Mark SFA's kind of made here is they're trying to get the ball out a little bit quicker. Uh, Lions got some major pressure on the opening drives with their pass rush. So they're trying to get the ball out of his hands a little bit quicker to get those shorter completions. They'll hand the ball straight ahead, breaking some tackles, fighting forward across the 45. That is McGowan. That's a gain of about seven or eight. That'll move the chain. So all of a sudden, SFA starting to assert their dominance up front offensively. They've made some adjustments, no question about it. We'll see if Lance Gidry and his defensive staff can adjust themselves. First and 10 to 46. Wing left, pistol formation, slot right. Another handoff, McGowan again, again fighting forward for about three, and he's just physical, has some forward lean. Will Douglas comes up to make the tackle. Just a gain of two, but. He's a big back, him. Mark, 225 pounds, and um, he's the bigger of the two backs as their listed starter, Ward, who he. He's out. I think he's out. out. He's a smaller guy, so this is a little different look for them than they've probably been seeing since he went out last week with an injury. Second down and eight from the 48, self. In the pistol, slot right. He'll drop the throw, looking. Four-man rush. Pressure from the backside, floats it down. It's caught. A flag is down. And we'll see if that's on Southeastern for a hold. It's caught anyway, and it'll be at the Southeastern 26-yard line. So all of a sudden, Trey Self, who was intercepted in their second offensive series, has been red hot here. As Ed Bourgeois is going to tell us what this penalty is, probably going to be a hold or Pass interference on Southeastern. Can he hold the Lions? Holding. Number 24 on the defensive team. That penalty is declined. First down. The Lumberjacks at the Southeastern 26. It was a double move, Mark, and the corner just reached out and grabbed him. Now, Frank Selfo was worried about this Lumberjack wide receiver crew coming in. Felt like they were as talented as anybody that has a group that Southeastern's faced this year. First down and 10 from the Lion, 26. Self with three wides to his right, one to his left. He'll turn, hand the football away, and not much there. Stephen Wright and Alexis Ramos, along with Josh Carr, wrap up Thomas Hutchings. No gain on the play. It'll bring up second and 10. Right here, if you're Southeastern, if you can just hold SFA to a field goal attempt, you feel like you get a win. 
here would be a pretty long field goal kick back into the breeze. So yeah, pretty good kicker in Storm Ruiz. Yep. Second down, 10, double slot formation, ball in the middle of the field. Self drops the throw, looking flush to his right. Flush to his right, now fires it away. That's going to be out of bounds, incomplete. On the pressure for Southeastern, Trey Drake along with Josh Carr. And taking a look at Storm Ruiz, he's 16 out of 21 on the year, uh, 76%. Six of seven inside of 20, seven of eight from inside of 30, two of four. Beyond 40 yards, he's one of two from beyond 50. Long as 51. Has had one blocked. It would be about a 42, 43 yarder from here. On third and 10, 923 to play first half. Lions on top, 13-7. Lumberjacks trying to draw closer. Two wide to the left, one to the right. Lions show blitz. They'll hand the ball straight ahead, and he runs right into a host of Lions. Not going to get there, only a couple. They tried to run it. They've probably seen that on film, Robbie. Southeastern's given up some yardage on third and long yeah. via the run. Right. That's just a gain of two, and that should give. Uh, they're going to keep the offense on the field. They're going to go for it here on fourth and eight. And you're one and seven, Mark. Nothing to lose. You want to be aggressive. And uh, they feel like their defense might have made some adjustments to slow the line offense up here. And I was curious. They ran the ball there fourth and ten, obviously. You can look at that two ways. You're trying to get the field goal closer, or you feel like you're going to go for it on fourth down, and that's what they're going to do on fourth and eight. Slot to the left. They'll motion right side. Now, Colby Carthel will call a timeout. Wouldn't be surprised if he brings the field goal in, unit in here. Timeout. Stephen F. Austin. They're second. 30 seconds. Keeping it right here, Mark. Uh, we're in the Gateway Ford broadcast booth. Here in Strawberry Stadium with the Lions up 13 to 7 with 8.39 to go here in this first half. Fans, don't forget, Monday night, 7 o'clock, inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfoot, broadcast live from Topla Catering at 113 East Thomas Street in downtown Hammond. You can enjoy dinner and the show in person as Coach Selfo and our own Alan Waddell. We'll go over tonight's game against Stephen F. Austin and they'll preview a big one next week in Conway, Arkansas against Central Arkansas. If you can't join the crowd, you can submit your questions via lionsports.net for the Ask the Coach segment of the show. Inside Southeastern Football with Frank Selfo airs each Monday night during the season on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Lumberjacks will keep the offense on the field. They'll go forward here on fourth and eight from the Southeastern 24. They'll spread three wide to the left, one to the right. Single set back behind Self. They'll motion Arklees, the tight end to his right. And now Frank Selfo wants a timeout. And Southeastern will use their first and I'll tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll keep it right here. Timeout. Southeast. We'll take a look at the Southland first, Conference scores from around the league. Uh, Central Arkansas leads Lamar 31 to 10. A uh, little misleading Lamar without Jordan Hoy, their quarterback who was injured early in the game last week. So no Jordan Hoy in that one. Nichols and Incarnate Word are tied at six in San Antonio. They're just underway second quarter. And McNeese trails Northwestern State 10 to nine in Lake Charles. That ball game just underway in the second quarter. And you know, we talk about playing meaningful football in November. And Southeastern right uh, now, Robbie, you look at the jumbled Southland Conference. Uh, Central Arkansas on top at you know four and one lines that go up there next week. Uh, Sam Houston with two losses, Southeastern with two losses. And uh, just a lot of teams within one or two games of first place. A lot of football left to play. Four weeks remaining in the Southland Conference season. Fourth and eight in the Southeastern 24. Double slot, Lions show pressure. Self takes the football, Lions come after him. Gets it away, it is incomplete. Good coverage by Sean Tres Pates. Nice pressure from Berglund. Xavier Lewis and Trey Spann who came on a blitz and Southeastern turns the Lumberjacks away. And Southeastern takes over first and 10. When you're in fourth and eight, fourth and nine, Mark, a great thing you can draw up there. And Coach Gidry did it as you bring pressure. You don't let the routes uh, get into their full run. You don't let a wide receiver get beyond the sticks. You try to force the quarterback to throw it faster than they anticipate. And uh, he had to do that and he kind of one hops it to him there. And John Trey was right on top of the wide receiver for the Lumberjacks. And, Lions get the football back here uh, at their own 24-yard line. Yeah, we'll see Cole Kelly into the ball game. He'll take it on the quarterback keep. Just a little counter 
Uh, fake the bubble out to the right side, kept the ball for about four. Now well, maybe five, we'll call it. Second down and five, gets up to the 29-yard line. As Southeastern has done every game this year, Cole Kelly will get into the football game early and get a full series. We saw that last week at HBU. A lot of times they'll use him in the short yardage, but here they bring him in on first and ten for a full series. He'll go under center here on second and five, I formation. Devontae Williams dotting the I, wing to the left. They'll motion Damian Dawson to the left side. He'll play fake. Rolling, dumps it out. He's got a man. That's Dawson, and he has stood up and close to a first down. Looks like he'll have it out to the 34-yard line. It's this little counter to the fullback. Kelly just dumps it off to Damian Dawson, sneaking out of the backfield. That'll move the chains, first and 10. That's certainly not something they've shown on tape very much this year, Mark, dumping it down to him, but a well-designed play by Coach Greg Stevens and Coach Frank Selfa. Kelly will stand in the shotgun. He'll have Devontae to his right slot to the left, single wide out right. Williams motions left side. Kelly to throw, steps up, climbs the pocket, now dumps it away. He's got C.J. Turner just on the check down. He'll have a first down, give him 12. C.J. just checked up over the middle when he was the outlet. Cole Kelly uh, had some pressure, had a man draped around his legs, but finds him. And that'll move the chains across the 45. Mark Robbie, that's the element that Cole Kelly brings. He's so big back there, it's hard to bring him down with just one guy. I mean, just from the eyeball test down here, other than maybe the two interior defensive lines, I don't know if SFA has anyone on their defense as big as Cole Kelly. Lions play at first and 10 from the 47. Kelly in the gun. Drop the throw, four-man rush. Flushed out of the pocket. Now dumps it away near side. That's Devontae's got it in the Lumberjack territory. Fights forward down to the... 46 of SFA, giving a gain of six. It'll bring up second and four. Kelly came into this ball game 19 out of 26 for 299 yards, seven touchdowns, no interceptions. One so thing he has been effective. One thing concerning right now, Mark, we're seeing is SFA is able to get some pressure on the line quarterback by just bringing four guys. They're able to drop seven guys right now in coverage, and their interior defensive linemen are really getting up the field and putting pressure on the line quarterbacks pretty early on. Kelly goes under center. He'll toss sweep right side. Devontae turns it up inside the 45, spinning. And he'll have the first down to the 41. Devontae Williams continues to play well in this first half with 603 and counting. Taking a look at Ahmad Murray. Boy, he got boy, you, you hate to see those injuries, Mark. He's pursuing the play on the pitch. He's uh he got twisted up. Yeah, like. he got really bent up the wrong way. His body went one way, his leg went the other way, and he's in. Uh, some pain down there right at the 43-yard line. His left leg looks like got uh, bent up down there. You know, SFA is a team that's been uh, pretty much decimated even before the season started with injuries, already playing a lot of young players and can ill afford to have another man down. We'll take a break. Back in one minute, Lions lead it 13-7 and driving, 6-0-1 to play. You're listening to Lions football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. <laughs> What opportunity has Southeastern provided you that you will forever be thankful for? Southeastern is giving me the education I need for my future. Whether or not I go pro, I know I'm going to be successful. Jacobs are our booth engineers. Richie Clark is the producer of Lions football. Now, Robbie uh, Ahmad Murray, if you're a Lumberjack fan, you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, up under his own power, looks like he's going to be fine. Got to the sidelines. Uh, a little bit of a limp, but I think he's going to be fine. He's over on the stationary bike. So the freshman out of Huntsville, Texas, uh, looks like he will be okay. Southeastern will play at first and 10 at the Lumberjack 41. Cole Kelly. On the field to direct this drive, and as we come out of break, he'll have three wides lined up to his left. Devontae Williams with 75 yards of total offense in this first half, set to his left, tight end to the right. Kelly to throw on first down, swings it out. This is Devontae again. He's got a couple of good blocks over there and slides forward for about four or five. So Devontae Williams, who came in with 26 catches on the year, already has six in this first half. So he's seeing a lot of action via the air. Mark, well, again, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Southeast Sports Radio Network. 
You're listening to Southeastern Lion Athletics right here on 90.9 FM KSLU Hammond, part of the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Ron Jones, sophomore out of Mandeville, checks in. At running back, Kelly under center. It'll be a play fake, looking. And he's got a corner out set up, and that's going to be interference. Got to be. And there the flag comes out. That was Ed McGee, it looked like, on a corner route, and he was held up over there by a lumberjack. Looked like uh, Trenton Gordon, a safety. And uh, the throw was on target, but Ed McGee was impeded. That'll be pass interference on Stephen F. Austin. Pass interference, number 38 on the defensive team. 15 yards, automatic, first down. Guys, I've never seen this before. The official went to throw the flag, and he pulled a Aaron Brooks. It came out the back of his hand, and it went backwards. Yeah, he was trying to get it out. And, Correction, the foul was number 17 on the defense. Well, they actually called on Josh Thompson. I, it was number 38 I saw, but they called on 17. who's not even on the field. But nonetheless, Southeastern has it first and 10 at the SFA 22-yard line, leading 13-7. to Cole Kelly from the gun slot to the right. Teron Jones set to his left. Austin Mitchell split out to the left. Kelly to throw across the middle. He's got his tight end. That is Branson Schwabel, the senior out of a meet. Give him eight down to the 14. That's his first catch of this football game. Branson Schwabel continues to have a very solid senior campaign. That's catch number 29 on the year. Second down and two. Deron Jones gets it straight ahead. He'll have the first down and a couple of more down to the 10. Southeastern will have it first and goal. Devontae Williams checks back into the ball game. 450 and counting first quarter. That's so efficient right there. You get a nice gain on first down and you come up quick tempo. You get the line of scrimmage and you run that run play right over the SFA uh, inside tackle position. They're not really lined up yet. You're able to get the first down. So Lions uh, about the worst spot on the field though, Mark. They're first and goal at, their own, at the 10 yard line. So can't get a first down. You got to get in the end zone here. And on first down, Devontae Williams is going to take it. He'll cut back inside, piles toward the end zone. Is he there? He's going to be short, it looks like, down to the one. Devontae Williams kind of hunting pecks his way and found an opening, cut it back, and powered forward for nine. It'll bring up second and goal for the one. And Cole Kelly's going to go under center. He'll quarterback sneak, and he'll power his way into the end zone. The big 6'7", 260-pound junior out of Lafayette scores his second touchdown rushing in this football game, and the Lions lead at 19-7. Oh, you saw that one coming from a mile away, Mark. As soon as he goes under center, I thought SFA would have brought more guys down in the box. They kind of had a little bit softer box for goal line situations, and he ran right over Drew Jones' center, gets into the end zone with ease, and the Lions pull to 19-7 with 4.04 to go in the extra point of coming. Bryce Broussard in for the PAT. The Lions missed their first extra point. It was a bad snap, or actually the ball slipped through the hands of Jacob Williams, and Broussard is one for one on PATs. He's able to get off the ground. Clean snap, places down. This one's blocked. And so that's the second PAT the Lions have missed in this one. That one was just blocked from pressure right up the middle. Looked like big number 99 might have got a hand on it. That's uh, Taj Bakari, the big 335-pound defensive lineman, got a push in the middle. Yeah, he's a, he's got a Lions have seen before. He transferred from Oklahoma State, was on the roster for the Cowboys when the Lions went to Stillwater in 2016. Guys, that ball never got up, though. It was a low kick right off the bat, and uh, I don't think it had a chance from the start. Allen, uh, this team has uh, done a lot of different ways this year, and I know you weren't with us last week, but you're seeing that that kind of that shift up with Cole Kelly and, and Chase and alter, alternating the uh, the possessions. Uh, what are your thoughts on it from down there? Well, you know, it's one of those situations where you got two good quarterbacks. I mean, Chasen is your senior leader. He's been here for two years and uh, started a lot of football games. But Cole Kelly's a dynamic player, and I think you got to be able to get him on the field, and that's what they've been able to do. And, guys, I'll tell you, I, I'm not sure. I think Brian Bennett has the quarterback rushing uh, uh, record here at Southeastern, but it's going to be in question if, if Cole – uh, plays a full season next year because, I mean, this guy, he's almost unstoppable from inside the five. Bryce Broussard, it's a line drive. It's going to go out of the back of the end zone. And SFA will have it first to 10 to 25. That was a 10-play, 76-yard drive, 430 off the clock. Cole Kelly from one yard out, his second rushing touchdown. And you talk about efficiency with Cole Kelly when he's been in the football game. 
Uh, we talked about it. His passer rating is 258.52. That's going to go up after he's 5 for 5 in this football game. And when he runs the football, it's always for positive yardage uh, when you take away sacks. And, again, he's just a tough guy to bring down at 6'7", 260 pounds. Trey Self back on the field for SFA. He's played well in this one. He'll operate out of the pistol shotgun or slot left. He'll hand the ball left side for breaking a tackle and getting something out of nothing, and that was Josh McGowan. He continues to run physical. He's hitting the backfield. Looked like it was going to be a loss. Just shedded the Lion defender and picks up four. Ron Cherry on the tackle for Southeastern. Mark, going back to Cole Kelly for just a second, you know, you think back to a year ago when Southeastern really struggled in short yardage situations, and really one guy has just totally changed that from 2018 to 2019. Second down, we'll call it a long five from the pistol. So it's going to play fake. Lions come with pressure on the corner out. It's got a man wide open. He's got it. Turns upfield and just kind of turned Sean Tres Spates around. Southeastern just couldn't get to Trey Self. He had enough time to throw that ball off his back foot and finds the corner route. And that'll be another first down for SFA to the 43. Kind of a, kind of a wobbly pass, Mark, but he did a good job in standing in the pocket. SFA's done a good job here when they've made some adjustments in the second quarter to give him more time back there when he had no time in the first quarter for the football. He'll hand the ball McGowan left side, again powering his way for another four or five, maybe six. He's just kind of leaning on Southeastern and certainly don't want to let him get some lather going. He's a big physical back, and they, they get him in that pistol look. He turns around. He's already going full steam. It's not like it's a full shotgun where he's standing stationary. When he gets the football, he has a couple steps to get head as a steam uh, after getting the football, and he does a nice job there getting six on first down. There's a play fake rolling right, and this throw is going to be incomplete. Threw it low for the intended receiver. That was Xavier Gibson, who's the leading receiver on this team coming in. His first target this football game. And it's going to bring up third and three. Third and three and a half. Ball just shy of midfield. So a big play here for this Lion defense. Still 2.31 to play. If you can get the football back, maybe a chance to put something together. Southeastern will get it first to start the third quarter. So a big down here for the Lion defense. Self in the gun. Southeastern with five at the line of scrimmage. They'll drop the throw. They'll rush three. On the out route, that's incomplete. And Josh Carr, who dropped and covered, has got a hand in front. That was a low throw intended for Gibson, and he couldn't dig it out of the dirt. And SFA will bring the punting unit on the field, and this is where you got to be alive for a fake. Right, it's part of the field. He can't jump off sides under five yards. He gives the Lumberjacks a first down. So I would assume the Lions here will try to drop back in coverage and set up a return for Austin Mitchell, who had a nice – Kickoff return to. Uh, oh, you got to play punt safe here. Yeah, exactly. Just play you defense. Just, just don't do anything to allow SFA to get somebody running free. And they're already lined. They only got four in a box here, so if they fake it, they'll pick it up pretty easily, I think. See if they fake it here. Well, they'll go ahead and punt it away. Lions with token pressure, and Austin Mitchell calls for the fair catch at his 12 yard line. I tell you what. If they would have snapped that to the up back, Red Sea would have parted. Yeah, there were enough bodies up, up there to block. You're right. I thought they were maybe starting something because they get them out and they uh, had their their gunners way out. They had four of them, two on each side of the formation. And there wasn't a lot of guys down there, Mark. I guess they could have maybe snuck one in there and gotten that first down. But nonetheless, Lions get it back here. Lions have been really good this season, Mark, with this short time frame situations where they have been able to drive the football and go back to McNeese, you go back to UIW even. Like last week. Yeah, HBU. last week against HBU. Nice drives to end the half with very little time left. Lions still do, still do have two timeouts. Jason Virgil back in the ball game. Teron Jones splits out to the left, to empty formation, three wides to the right to throw. Coming near side, Austin Mitchell with his first catch. That'll be a first down across the 20, up to the 23-yard line. And that should be just enough to move the chains. We'll see. It looks like they will. Got 10 right on the nose. SFA mark is just not allowing anything down the field right now. They're totally taking it away, and the line quarterbacks have done a great job in recognizing that and dumping it down out of the backfield, not allowing uh, SFA to, to tee off on those guys. Four-man rush. Another check down. This is Devontae. He looks for the sideline. He gets it. That'll be a short gain of a couple. Lions with uh, two timeouts remaining. 151 to play in this first half. Southeastern on top, 19-7, to trying to put together a 
length of the field drive to close out this first half. Now SFA align uh, their corners up right in press coverage. The two high safeties. They're in man to man here. Four down front on second and seven. Virgil will throw on the out route. He's got Francis Schwabel, but not much there. Maybe a couple of yards. That was a great catch by Schwabel. Able to snatch that football with his hands, but only got a couple. It's going to bring up third and four. Boy, SFA is getting a lot of pressure right now, Mark. They're getting after it. Uh, really trying to control the line of scrimmage and putting pressure on Chasen back there. Not allowing him to sit back in the pocket and have time. 126 and counting. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up across the middle. It's tipped up in the air and intercepted. It hit uh, Branson Schwabel in the hands, but uh, bounced off his shoulder pads, went high in the air, and SFA is going to come on the field to Lion 44. Yeah, it's a ball that's well thrown by Chase, and he'll get the stat for that as having an interception, but uh, Branson, uh, who's been Ruling sure handed all year, interception uh, doesn't come down with it, goes down. through his hands, hits his face mask, goes up in the air, and SFA is right there to intercept the football, so now they have an opportunity here with 116 left in the half and a timeout to try to draw this game. Uh, within five. So Virgil throws his inter ninth interception of the year. That one's not on him. That was a no, well-thrown no. football. And, and he's had a few this year that aren't on him. We've had some weird bounces this season where he's thrown some footballs and it's kind of uh, gotten off somebody's hands and got up in the air. It's a free ball to intercept, and SFA does a good job in bringing that one in. The Lions can sudden change defense here. Low snap, self to throw, has time. And he fires it caught. That'll be short of the first down by a yard. That's Gibson on the catch. In soft coverage, just let him curl up for nine. And yeah, we come up on the one minute mark. SFA has two timeouts. I have one timeout, excuse me. There's a throw right side. That'll be a first down, knocked out of bounds at the 28 yard line. So SFA already in Storm Marie's field goal range. And what well, I tell you, we talk about turnovers, and Southeastern's turned the football over. It's been tough sledding. And right now, each team has turned the football over. Lions were able to capitalize. With a touchdown on their interception. SFA trying to capitalize here with 54 seconds at the southeastern 28 yard line, first and 10. Gibson in motion near side. Lions come with pressure and dumps it away incomplete. And they're going to say McGowan was in the area as Trey Self just kind of threw it. Yeah. He was out of the pocket. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, but there was a runner in the area. So. Give a lot of credit to Galua down on the defensive line mark. He recognized the screen right away, and he's right there in coverage to get on that SFA back out of the backfield, forcing the throwaway football there. He does a good job recognizing it early for the tackle position. Second down, 10, 50 seconds to play in this first half. SFA with the football after the interception. Gibson motions near side. Lions with pressure. Trey flushed out of the pocket. Now dumps it, checks it out. His wide open running back out of the backfield. And he's still on his feet inside the 10. And Southeastern came with pressure, left the running back all alone. Trey Self got out of the pocket, found him, and McGowan is down. They're already down. Daly on Ward. And with 41 seconds, SFA will have it first and goal. Yeah, he's just out there blocking, Mark, and the play kind of broken down. He gets up from... The play yeah. is not subject to the 10-second runoff. The player made the line to gain, and he was out of bounds, stopping the clock. And yeah, he's out there blocking, and he has the awareness to get up and see there's nobody out in front of him. He just kind of gets out in, into the flats, and he finds him. And uh, just like that, SFA with the football first and goal at the 10-yard line. It's like McGowan's okay up under his own power. Guys, we were able to get a little pressure at the beginning of this game, but over the last few possessions, really haven't had been a chance to get to self. And credit that offensive line for Stephen F. Austin. Take a look at it. Uh, Zach Ingram, 6'7", 275 pound junior. A.J. Brown, 6'2", 316, a senior. Juan Singletary, 6'1", 280 pound freshman at center. Keegan Holmes, 6'4", 295, also a freshman. And Chet Munden, 6'5", 305. First and goal, self to throw, looking. Throws it uh, far side, nobody home, incomplete. Wide receiver curled inside, he threw it outside. He'll bring up second and goal. 37 seconds to play. And SFA does have one timeout left. They could probably try to sneak a run in here if they wanted to. They'll operate out of an offset eye pistol formation. Slot left, he'll... 
fake it, rolling, fires it away into the end zone, incomplete. Great coverage there by Donnell Ward-McGee, who had the fullback out of the backfield. And yeah, man coverage, uh, didn't get his head around, but boy, shattered and trailed him very well. And Self had nowhere to fit the football. I'll bring up third down and goal. Lions trying to keep the Lumberjacks out of the end zone. SFA came on the field at the 43-yard line after an interception that was deflected off of Branson Schwabel. Third and goal. They'll hand the ball away, and Isaac Eddie Berglund has him in the backfield, gets away, and runs into a couple of more Lions. Loss of a couple. That's going to bring up fourth down. It's going to be field goal time for SFA as this clock will run down. They'll call a timeout and try to walk into halftime, trailing 19 to 10 if they can put this through the uprights. Ultimately That's a great good, uh, Yeah, just ultimately a great job by the line defense. And they, they move the football. They got it into field goal range. But, boy, when you can sudden change and at least hold your opponent to three, it's always a win. Stephen F. Austin. Guys, do you feel like that call right there by SFA was, you know, didn't want to turn the football over, just wanted to get points in this situation? Well, probably so. They probably feel like they've made some adjustments defensively. And, you know, they turned, they went for it on fourth and two. And what was an easy uh, field goal range for Storm Ruiz, they went for it, didn't make it. They probably feel like they need points here. But, you know, Trey Self's thrown, you know, 10 interceptions after the, the interception he threw in the first quarter. So that's probably just a safe play. Let's take points, get in the halftime, and see if they can chip away in the second half. You, you go back to that play by Donnell Ward-McGee, and, you know, he wasn't available in a couple of the games, uh, Mark, and this Lions secondary is a lot better when he's in the football game. No, no question. Didn't play at McNeese or here versus Incarnate Word. Storm Ruiz. It was kicked a ton of field goals this year, and Southeastern's going to call a timeout, try to ice him. Frank Selfo calls their Time second out. timeout. Southeastern, their second, 30 seconds. Storm Marie's has made 16 field goals on the year in 21 attempts. Comparing that to Southeastern, Lions have made just six in just eight attempts. So SFA's moving the football. They're getting the ball in the red zone, just not able to convert a lot of touchdowns. And from this distance, this will be right at uh, 29 yards. Ruiz is six out of seven. It's also seven out of eight from 30 to 39. So uh, pretty near automatic for Storm Ruiz. All spotted just inside the right hash. 29-yard attempt. Snap is clean. Kick is up. It's that one strong and down the middle. And SFA will close out the first half with a field goal. Southeastern will lead at halftime 19 to 10. Is the end? Well, let's go down time. to Alan Waddell. He will have Frank Selfo as he comes off the field, headed toward the locker room. Alan, take it away. Hey, guys, I got Coach Selfo here. Coach, talk about that last uh, situation right there where you're able to hold him out of the end zone. Yeah, I thought our defense did a good job not letting them. They took a cup, ran a wheel route, ran a corner route. We had good coverage on both of them. Uh, had pressure on another one on the screen. Did a really good job there. Coach, offensively, uh, pretty efficient there in the first half. Uh, they're playing soft and making you throw the ball short. You'd be able to do that in the first half. Yeah, we were. And, uh, you know, we didn't get a lot of possessions. They had a lot of first downs. Uh, they kept the ball. And some of our drives were long, Alan, so that shut down or kept us from getting on the field as many times. So we need more at-bats. The turnover was unfortunate. You know, it was a tip ball. Went straight up in the air. But that's, that's a drive that we got to convert on. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Back to you all. All right, thanks, Alan. We'll go ahead and take a timeout and come back. Amber Lodge Shop Halftime Report when we return on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. What opportunity has Southeastern provided you that you will forever be thankful for? Southeastern has given me the education I need for my future. Whether or not I go pro, I know I'm going to be successful. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, 
achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are We'll be back with you on the half. Please, Stephen F. Austin, 19. Why do you support Southeastern Athletics? So Southeastern is where our family started. We uh, met my wife here, um, you know, met all our friends here, and now it's given us two beautiful children, and now it's part of our family.
We are Southland Strong. More information about the Southland Conference is available online at southland.org. Welcome back. We're at halftime as Southeastern leads SFA by a score of 19 to 10. And we're going to take a look at the individual statistics in the first half. First for Stephen F. Austin. Trey Self had a solid first half. He was 13 out of 22 for 161 yards, had one touchdown. He was picked off once, sacked one time. Quarterback rating of 126.5. Uh, receiving borders, uh, three catches, 46 yards. Arkley's a tight end, two catches, uh, 44 yards, and a touchdown. Xavier Gibson, four catches for 28 yards. Cobb had two for 23. McGowan, one catch for 18. And Simmons, one for two. Running the football, McGowan, solid first half. Eight carries, 45 yards, had a long of 16. Hutchins, uh, five for six yards. Uh, actually, he lost a couple of yards out of net of four. And Self and Raquel both had minus yardage uh, in the first half for SFA. For Southeastern, we take a look at the Lions offensively. Jason Virgil, solid first half, 11 out of 13 for 87 yards and a touchdown. Or, excuse me, an interception. It was a deflected ball that, uh, quite frankly, Branson Swable uh, got his hands on. It would have been a tough catch, but uh, it was tipped up in the air in traffic. SFA came down with it, so that interception goes on the stat sheet for Jason Virgil. Uh, Cole Kelly was 5 out of 5, coming off the bench to direct a touchdown drive for 36 yards. Uh, receiving, uh, Devontae Williams, solid first half, catching the football. Seven catches, most of them check downs, and uh, short catches out of the backfield for 39 yards. C.J. Uh, Turner, 3 for 34. J.J. Connor, 1 for 14. Marcus Cooper had one catch for 11. Austin Mitchell, 1 for 10. Branson Schwabel, uh, two catches for 10 yards, and Damian Dawson, one catch, four or five yards. On the ground, Devontae Williams, six rushes for 53 yards net. Cole Kelly, three for 10. Ed McGee uh, rushed at one time for eight yards. That was for a touchdown. Cole Kelly had two rushing touchdowns in the first half. Lorenzo Nunez, one carry for seven yards. Teron Jones, one for four. And Marcus Cooper, uh, two carries for three yards in the first half. Uh, there were some team losses of six yards on a, on a bad snap. Uh, taking a look at the defensive statistics uh, for Southeastern. Uh, as we take a look at it, Ward McGee had five tackles in the first half. Trey Drake had five total tackles. Uh, Isaac Adame Berglund had five total tackles, two for loss and a sack. Uh, Chantres Spates, three tackles. Uh, Dwayne Thomas had two. Josh Carr had two and a tackle for loss. Uh, Southeastern had one sack that was credited to Isaac Berglund. Uh, Xavier Lewis had the lone interception for the Southeastern Lions. We'll go ahead and take another two-minute timeout. We'll come back with more of the halftime show. Actually, a two-minute timeout, more of the halftime show back in two minutes. You're listening to Lions Football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are
the sound system, kind of a makeshift yeah. sound system here in Strawberry Stadium today, so it sounds a little bit different. You're listening to us on your earphones or whatever. Uh, I tell you what, take your hat off to the Southeastern uh, management here for uh, getting uh, – <laughs> things up and going because what happened is a possum got into the power transformer, blew the transformer, and say so there was no sound in Strawberry Stadium. They had to run out uh, to Cole's Rental World out of Mandeville and donated most of the speakers uh, for the game tonight. They got them here, got them installed. Take your hat off to Tim Landry, the sound and uh, engineer here at uh, Southeastern, the engineering department. So uh, tell you what, they got uh, things settled. And uh, doesn't really make sound a whole lot different. No, it really doesn't. You know, I'm down there on the field, and I, I noticed it. Um, the only reason I noticed it is because I walked by one of the speakers, and, like, hit because it's down there field level, you know. So, uh, but the only difference is normally this, the sound is coming from the scoreboard, but now it's coming from all throughout Strawberry Stadium. So, yeah, it doesn't sound much different. I think that our athletic administration did a really good job of getting this thing up and running uh, for today's game. And Southeastern really, in the first half, only had five possessions. You know, played pretty well, was pretty efficient. Um, they had the one turnover right before the half that was kind of unfortunate. It was a good throw. And Branson Schwabel, nine out of ten times, makes that catch. Bobbles up, goes up in the air, and they pick up, pick it off. But great job by the Lion defense holding them to a field goal right there and staying up by two possessions. I think overall Southeastern has played well in this football game. Yeah. You had the turnover, and you know, did some good things defensively. You did have the breakdown on the touchdown throw to the tight end, which may or may not have been an illegal formation. I know Frank Selfo and the Lion coaching staff felt like it was, but – well, I'll say this, he was wide open. Was so, wide, I mean, yeah. they, they, somebody didn't think he was an eligible receiver. Well, he, that, it was a bust. It was man coverage as well. So, uh, that usually doesn't happen unless you think the, the player is ineligible. But credit SFA, good play design. They were able to claw their way back in it. And you got to take your hat off to Colby Carthel. You know, they're 1-7 and seven yeah, coming in here. Hard. Young football team banged up, but they are playing hard. Well coached, you can tell that. Well, Mark, you know, if you're coming on the road, you're a little outmanned. You're certainly the way your success to, to winning the game is, uh, especially when you're playing a team that's as good offensively as Southeastern, is limit their possessions, try to get it to the second half on an opportunity, and they've done that. Southeastern's only had five possessions in this game, and one of the reasons is because they're holding the football, but also they're making us drive it four and five yards at a time. We're not hitting any of those explosive plays we're used to seeing. So on one hand, you tip your hat to Southeastern for being able to take advantage of that and being efficient and being patient and scoring touchdowns on three of your five possessions. But then on the other hand, SFA strategy is working. They've got this game for the second half with an opportunity still down only nine points. Now, if your Southeastern is a little concerning, our field goal kicking is, uh, has certainly been an issue in this one. We had the, 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 the first snap was a little high. Jacob Williams couldn't hold on to it. We, we missed that extra point. And then I'll tell you, I'm down there on the field, guys. The second one, the, the, the one that was blocked, it had no chance to go in. It, it came out low uh, from the beginning. So got to get that cleaned up because who knows, you might need to make a field goal, not a PAT, to win this game. Now, real quickly, let's take a look at the Southland Conference scoreboard. Central Arkansas is all over Lamar uh, down in Beaumont, 45-10. to 10. That game, uh, the, Lamar's without Jordan Hoy there quarterback who played outstanding here against Southeastern. He's not able to go today, so a little bit of an aberration there. Nickel State on the road at Incarnate Word. They lead it 20-16 to to the Colonels. Uh, Northwestern State, solid first half at McNeese, up 17-9, to and that, that that may be the team that, you know, they probably wish they had the beginning of the season over again because they're playing well the last uh, three or four weeks. And, Mark, I'll tell you, that McNeese game, it's 17-9. to McNeese cannot move the football in Northwestern. They scored a touchdown on a kickoff return for a touchdown, and Northwestern turned the football over inside their own 15-yard line and held McNeese to a field goal. So, realistically, the Cowboys doing nothing offensively against Northwestern at home. And it's amazing how team, different teams match up yep. with, with different teams. Northwestern, that kind of defense, it's not going to beat themselves and uh, showing over in Lake Charles. Go ahead and take another one-minute timeout. We'll come back with the start of the second half here at uh, Strawberry Stadium. Lions lead it 19-10. to 10. Back in one, you're listening to Lions Football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Planet Fitness is a proud supporter of Southeastern Athletics and Lion Football. Located at 1703 West Thomas Street in Hammond, Planet Fitness offers cardio and strength equipment, certified trainers, and additional club amenities. Planet Fitness of Hammond is open and staffed 24 hours per day, 7 days per day.
19 to 10 at halftime here as we come to the end and prepare to start the third quarter. I'm Robbie Rhodes with Alan Waddell and the voice of the Lions, Mark Willoughby. Troy Granger, Ray Jacobs are our studio uh, producers. And Richie Clark is the producer of Lion football. And don't forget, if you're leaving the stadium today, you can use the Lion Up Pickup Services golf cart driven by Lion student athletes, coaches, shuttle fans to and from Strawberry Stadium. Stops include 12 Oaks Park, parking lot behind Dyson Hall, Gate 2 at West Stadium, Gate 3 East Stadium, and the east side of Friendship Circle. Tonight, you can check that out on the way out of the stadium. The lineup pickup services, it does begin two hours prior to kickoff, and you can use that against Nickel State in a few weeks when the Lions return home, and they run until 30 minutes after the game's conclusion tonight against Stephen F. Austin. So Southeastern comes back on the field to take this kickoff to start the third quarter, and to give you the call of today's action in the second half, the voice of the Lions, Mark Willoughby. Alex Schrag will tee it up for SFA. They'll move left to right on your radio dial if you're watching on YouTube. You can see what we're watching here is uh, Southeastern will receive the football first to start third quarter, leading 19 to 10. And here's a high hanging kick. This is going to go into the end zone and out of the back, well out of the back. Good foot in that one with that north wind at his back. So Southeastern will come on the field first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. And guys, uh, take your hat off to SFA's defense uh, coaching staff. You know, they, they've given up 19 points in this first half, but. They've made Southeastern take the long road to score points. And what that's done, that's shortened the football game. They haven't allowed anything explosive. Uh, Southeastern has yet to uh, run a play of more than 20 yards in this football game. Well, they've just taken all that down and filled the stuff. The Lions have hung their hat on this year away from them. And they forced Southeastern to drive the football here. Lions will line up under center on first down. They'll run the end around Lorenzo Nunez, and he'll have some running room into the secondary, and that'll be the first explosive out to midfield as uh, we just talked about no plays over 20, and Lorenzo rips off 25 on the end of round. That's one way to shake things up is get some misdirection going. It's this lumberjack defense. Lions want to go up tempo. Chase and Virgil starting the second half. We've seen both quarterbacks in this football game from the left hash. Devontae lined up to his right with a short slot to the right. Virgil will throw, looking. He'll check it down again. Devontae shakes a tackler, and he's pushed out of bounds on a nice open field tackle over there after a gain of three. That was Caleb Lawton who did a nice job to hold that to a three-yard gain. Second down and seven. I will be spotted at the Lumberjack 47-yard line just underway here, third quarter. Glad you're with us on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Virgil under center, offset eye formation, tight end right, slot left. He'll turn, run the stretch play, and a big hole right up the gut. That's Devontae Williams. He'll power forward for a gain of eight inside the 40 and give the Lions another first down. And this is perhaps Devontae's best game of the year on the ground from a production standpoint. Lions will go up tempo under center. They'll hand it to Devontae again. He'll bend it back right side, cuts it back, and powers down for another four. If you take a look, Devontae Williams has uh, eight carries, 65 yards in this football game. Again, Lions want to go tempo. Get under center. They'll play fake. Boot. Looking. Looking. And he's got Austin Mitchell just dropped it. He was dragging on the crossing route, hit him right in the shoulder pad, just dropped the football. Yeah, they kind of faked the deep route there, Mark, and he kind of runs a, a cutbacker. You, you, you think he was trying to double move, but he actually – Breaks his route off, cuts across the field, and he's wide open. He had a step on the SFA defender, and it was a good throw by Chasen and just out of his hands, and here's a big third and five for Southeastern, more like third and six, actually, here. It's a long five. And probably four down territory, especially into that win. Mitchell motions left side from the gun. Virgil to throw, looking. Out of the backfield, and he had Devontae Williams, who wasn't looking for the football, falls incomplete. Yeah, boy, there's a fine line uh, trying to keep drives alive. And Southeastern's going to punt it from the 35-yard line. Wow. This is a interesting decision here. Let's see if uh, Austin does one of those rugby-style punts, Mark, where he just tries to. Yeah, you only got six yards to go. You're at the 35, but Frank Selfo's going to try to pin him. They're just playing the same defense, play defense down there. So right here it's going to be, might take a delay a game. Nope. I'll go ahead and punt it. 
And he's going to kick this one into the end zone. Uh, we'll see. Checks up, and the Lions save it into the end zone. So uh, that backfired. SFA will come on the field first and 10 at the 20-yard line, just a 15-yard change of possession. Almost worked. He got it to land right around the 2-3 yard line and back up. And Lions uh, tried to get their hands on it and coverage down there to knock the ball out of the end zone. But it does get in there and SFA will get the football at the Lion at their own 20, excuse me, to start their opening drive. And a drive that had a lot of uh, success early there, Mark. Just kind of gets bogged down with a couple miscommunications. You get a drop. You get a guy now looking for the football. And just like that, you got to punt the football back. And let's see the Lions can run the football through this second half. SFA on the field for their first offensive possession. They'll snap it from the 20. Trey Self will play fake. Wants to go across the middle. Wide open on the crossing route. That's Gibson. He'll have a first down out to the 40, 41-yard line. Give him 21. So uh, Southeastern had a chance right there to convert. Chose to punt it. Kick it in the end zone. SFA rips off 21 on their first play of the second half. Lions lead it 19-10. to 10. SFA, a lot of momentum, though, in the second quarter. They're trying to carry it in here to the third. Pistol formation, self. He'll turn, hand the football away. He runs right into Josh Carr, no game. Josh Carr slanting down from that defensive end position. McGowan on the carry. Brings up second down and ten. And he's a good back. He, he's really a good back. He, I know he doesn't get much there, Mark, but you saw the ability he has at the end of that second quarter on that last SFA drive before he got nicked up. When he went out, Mark, they couldn't move the football again. And so he got nicked up at that last drive with a little leg injury. He had to come out, had to sit out the first and goal plays. And they on, couldn't do anything after that. On second down, there's another corner out wide open. That's uh, Gibson again in the Lion territory. He's out of bounds to the 38. And all of a sudden, Southeastern just uh, getting turned around in the secondary. That was man coverage, Xavier Lewis. Beating an SFA right now, knocking on the door. Pistol formation for Self from the Lion 37. On first and 10, it runs speed option right side. Lions have it strung out, but he runs right through an arm tackle and gets a first down. Southeastern had him wrapped up for not much, but McGowan just ran right over a Southeastern Lion, give him eight. He'll be short of the first down. He'll say he's out of bounds to the 28-yard line. All of a sudden, SFA is, he saw it start to turn the momentum there in the first half. And Southeastern just unable to Execute on that last drive to open this second half. You had a drop pass and SFA with the football. Second down and two. Man in motion near side. They'll turn, hand it away to McGowan. And he'll power forward for another three or four and a first down to the 25. So not much fancy for SFA, just power football, boot fakes off of it. Running some crossing routes and corner routes, and they're having a lot of success against this line of defense. Southeastern leads at 19 to 10. See if they can buckle down here and hold the Lumberjacks to a field goal. Did a good job at the tail end of the first half. Held SFA out of the end zone, forced a field goal. From the Lion 25, bubble outside. It's caught, gets a block, and he's going to take it inside the 10, 5, down to the 2-yard line. And uh, SFA right now has it first and goal to Southeastern 2. SFA just really doing a great job, Mark, drawing up plays, scheming up against the Lion defense. they just kind of going out to the numbers there. And uh, SFA just uh, first and goal now. And just like that, it, it, Lions had so much momentum on the opening drive. And then it bogs down. You give it back to Stephen F. Austin, and they go right down the field now and have a chance to punch in and make it a two-point game. See if the Lions can stand tall here on first and goal from the two-yard line. That will set to one officially. They'll go with a power formation, offset eye. Hands it away straight ahead, hitting the backfield for a loss. That is Dwayne Thomas, who came off the right edge unblocked. And there'll be a loss of a couple. That's just a good job there, Mark, and it puts him in negative on the first play and backs him down to the three-yard line, so... 
Nice all in all, you got to keep fighting, keep battling, see if they force him to throw no. the football here and get it in completion, making a third down. Watch the tight ends on play action. Here's Self. He will play fake. Rolling, looking. And he'll fire this one out of the back of the end zone. That might be intentional grounding. There was no receiver over there. Wasn't out of the pocket. We saw Cole Kelly uh, get one of those earlier yeah. this year yeah. on almost the exact same kind of play. Yeah, he had his tight end open. Uh, Ramos had fallen down in coverage, but he didn't see him. And he had to throw the football away here. So here's a third down. And you see if you got to watch SFA trying to spread Southeastern out and trying to run the football in that coverage. But this is a big play in the game. I, I would think SFA goes for it here, Mark, if they don't pick this up. Yeah, they're going to spread three wides to the right in a cluster formation. Single wide out left. McGowan in the pistol. Self to throw. Has time. Fires it away. Intercepted in the end zone. Lions have the football and a flag comes down. That's on Donnell Ward McGee. Let's see what the call is. You gotta get the Lions for something here, Mark. Now, I didn't see any contact. Uh, well, of course, when I looked up, he had the football. I didn't see anything happen before that. But it's thrown by the back judge, who was might have, right it, over it, the play. So I don't know what this is going to be. It's going to be on Southeastern, obviously. The pass on the field on the ruling is a touchdown. Pass interference. Touchdown. Touchdown. Number 24 on the defensive team. Ball in the two-yard line. First down. It's not a touchdown. It's an interception. Uh, the ball was intercepted. Dead Bourgeois. A little bit confused there. Said it was a. I'm sorry. That's a mistake. The ruling on the field is an interception. Pass interference. Number 24. Ball's on the two-yard line. Uh, the interference came away from the football. Uh, obviously, it was on Chantrez Spates. It was nowhere near the football. It was Donnell Ward McGee who intercepted it, so I'm not sure. Now we didn't, we didn't get a replay, so he set it down for Stephen F. Austin from the two-yard line. Handoff straight ahead, touchdown. SFA 19 to 16, 9:45 to play. Flag is down in the end zone. We'll see what this is on as Xavier Lewis is down injured in the backfield. Not sure what the flag was, Mark. I don't know if they're going to call it targeting or a helmet to helmet on the on the tackle in the end zone. Well, that's you never see targeting on a direct run like that. Yeah, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I was going to say. But they're not defenseless. But we'll see. And Xavier Williams is injured, so all of a sudden Southeastern finds themselves back where they were a couple of weeks ago. Robbie just uh, rolling on the field is a touchdown. Pass interference. Personal foul, face mask, number 46 on the defense, 15 yards. Just having a tough time here getting it right. Bourgeois is having a rough day. Uh, <laughs> Southeastern called for the face mask, 19 to 16, your score. Again, Southeastern has two missed extra points, so right now those are looming large. Man, they just get bailed out in the interception. On the, I'd love to see the replay of that interference. I, I didn't see it, and. Very easily could have been, but I didn't notice it on the field. Uh, Sean so. Tress Bates was nowhere around where the ball was thrown, so I don't know if it happened away from it. But the official who threw the flag was in the middle of the field looking at the receiver and the and Donna Ward McGee. Right. So it had to have happened before the before pass. that, but that should have been a holding call, not a pass interference. Yeah. So I, I don't know how that call could have happened, but it was thrown nonetheless, and SFA got bailed out. Southeastern. Leads at 19-16, extra point on the way, and not sure what's going on here. SFA offensive lineman taking his time getting off the field. Looks like he had to sub off there, and they bring somebody else into the field goal unit. Kick is good, 9.44 to play. Lions lead at 19 to 17, back in one minute on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network.
What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Stephen F. Austin drives the football, nine plays, 80 yards, 351 off the clock. They got second life after a Trey Self pass was intercepted in the end zone, but a mysterious pass interference flag overturns that. They score on the next play and lead it, or actually trail by score, 19 to 17. And uh, Southeastern's got to wake up here as the SFA has uh, run off 10 straight. Yeah, no doubt, and that's been the... Uh the shift in this game, you know, Lions went in the locker room up 19-10 at halftime, but I felt like SFA had just kind of dominated the back end of the first quarter and the entire second quarter. Uh, Lions were able to get a touchdown in that second quarter, but I just felt like SFA had found something that was working for them. I'll tell you one thing they've done is what we talked about. They have they have uh, shut down Southeastern's explosiveness here today. They've taken it away from them, not given them anything over the top. Of course, you did get the end of round on the first play of the third quarter. Lions got it down to the SFA 35, but had it on a fourth and six, chose to punt it instead of go for it, and SFA makes them pay, driving at 90 or 80 yards and nine plays. See if the Lions can play tit for tat here and drive this football. That uh, will be an onside kick after the – that's a great play there. It goes out of bounds. That will be a great turnout for – or turn of events for Southeastern. That's going to give them the football. Should be up around the 40-yard line, I think. Let's see. Uh, they tried to sneak it in there, Mark, and it was a very poorly executed kick as he just kicked it too far. And it took one hop and goes right out of bounds. And so Southeastern's going to have great field position to start this opening drive. That will come out to the 35. Great procedure on the kicking team. Ball's out of bounds at the 30-yard line. First down at the 35. Lions will have it at the 35-yard line. Cole Kelly will start this drive. His lone series directed the line touchdown drive at 75 yards. He has two rushing touchdowns in the ball game. Devontae Williams motions far side. Kelly to throw has time across the middle. He's got a short uh, crosser, and that is... Lorenzo Nunez, I believe, it'll be a short gain of a couple. Hey, Connor, in the seam of the field, running out of the slot and uh, didn't try to chuck it deep. Marquise Williams checks in for Southeastern. Lions will line up three wides left, one right. Kelly's going to keep the football in the zone, keep. He's got some running room, dives forward, breaks a tackle, has the first down, and Tell you what, Cole Kelly went airborne. Looked like a aircraft carrier running through and picks up about seven or eight. And a line first down to the 46. And that's that element that's not been there a lot. It, it's Guys, a, I think it shows a lot of uh, confidence in Cole Kelly to bring him in this situation as they made it a two-point game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lions will go with a heavy formation tight end left. Short man flank. Kelly wants to throw. Dumps it out of the backfield. He's got Devontae. Shakes a man into Lumberjack territory inside the 40. And Devontae Williams continues to excel running and passing and receiving in this football game. Cole Kelly wanted to go on the deep pass there, Mark, but SFA gets pressure right up the gut, and he has to check it down. He knows where his check is. He finds Devontae. He makes a good move in the open field. And the Lions into SFA territory now, marching towards the end zone here to try to get those seven points back. I'll go with a tight end wing right or left, split out to the right. Is Lorenzo Nunez. Kelly wants to throw, and it's uh, dug off the ground by Ed McGee. Is that a catch? The freshman pulled it off the ground, and they're going to say it's a catch. They're going to talk about it. And they're gonna, I think they're going to get Cole Kelly a roughing the passer as he was hit low, Mark, after he threw that football. 
Uh, he took a spill. We got a flag down in the backfield. It looks like that will be roughing the Guys, backfield. that was a great catch by Ed McGee. I was standing right here, went down and grabbed it off the turf. Rolling on the field is a catch. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 54 on the defensive team, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. It's going to be on Ahmad Murray, who came off the field in the first half uh, with the roughing the passer. But again, credit Ed McGee with a tremendous catch, as Allen mentioned, just took that one off the turf, showed some strength in his hands. The previous oh. play is under further review. Now they're going to look at it now. Th this one's going to stand, guys. I'm saying I was standing right here. This was a great catch. Didn't touch the ground. Now the ball can touch the ground if he has control of it. Uh, if, it if it's uh, control, it can actually make contact. Now the ball can't be trapped on the ground. It has to be secured and before it has any contact with the ground. There's not many times where I'm down here and I'm literally two feet from the catch, and that's how close I was. I mean, it was right in front of me. I mean, this was a great catch. Now we'll see the replay on the big board. And uh, you can't really tell from here. And it looked like he caught the ball from our angle. We're high above it, uh, and it was right down in front of us. But, again, you're not down on the field. You know, you had a better look at it than we did, Allen, but it certainly looked like a catch from here. But it was low and definitely close enough to look at on review. Either way, Southeastern will have a first down. It's just going to depend on whether they have it first and 10 at the 15 or back at the 30-yard line. Good drive, Mark, no matter what. You drive down the football field. You have a little adversity there where you get a touchdown and make it a two-point game. You drive the football now here, and you have a chance to – you, you want seven, but even three points helps you dramatically because it prevents a field goal from beating you at this point in the game. But it's going to be a lot of scoring that is going to be forced to go here uh, throughout this game. There's going to be more scoring, so uh, Southeastern needs to punch this one in the end zone and make this one a 26-17 game. While we can, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Southeastern Sports Network. You're, You're listening to Southeastern Lion catch. Athletics right here on 90.9 FM, KSLU Hammond, part of the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. And Eagle Eye Waddell was correct. The catch is confirmed. And Southeastern has it first to 10 at the Lumberjack 15-yard line. Ed McGee has a touchdown run to his credit of eight yards. And right there, a nice catch. Penalty tacked on. Cole Kelly in the football game. Devontae Williams lined up to his right. Lions will spread three wides to the right. Lorenzo Nunez flanked out to the far side. Cole Kelly on first down, swings it out of the backfield. Devontae's got it, looks for a block. Oh, this is going to come back as uh, Marquise Williams got some jersey, and that's going to back the Lions up. That was, I'll tell you what, almost a great, ex well-executed play. De oh, Devontae right. Williams caught it in stride. And I thought Marquise Williams released him early enough not to get a penalty as I well, watched the replay. Holy, number 12 on the offensive team, uh, you 10 yards from the previous spot. He played first down. That's almost an automatic call when you're out there on an island and that DB turns his back around. Even uh, whether it's an accurate call or not, it's just almost called every time yeah. in just about any football game you see. So uh, they'll back the Lions up first and 20. Southeastern had a drop pass on the last drive, which kind of bogged things down, ended up punting it. Now they'll have it first and 20, so I have to get to the five-yard line to keep the chains moving. 7.40 and counting in this third quarter. Kelly versus a four-man rush, has time, dumps it across the middle. It's caught, and the ball's fumbled and picked up. I'll see if he was down. That was Marquise Williams. They're going to say he was down, but I'll tell you what, that ball came out. SFA jumped on it. Yeah, that's actually Ed McGee who caught the football. Ruling on the field is that the ball carrier was down prior to the ball becoming coming out. See if Southeastern tries to snap this one quickly to, in case there's a review. We don't have replay in our press box to take a look at it. Gain of nine, second and 11. Lions have to get to the Lumberjack five. Lumberjacks jump off sides. That'll be a free five, so... Kind of makes up a little bit for that holding call. Offside, number 50 on the defensive team. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. It'll be on Marcus Mosley who came across early. And will march it down to the 11 yard line. It'll bring up second and six. 
Twins to either side. Devontae Williams to Cole Kelly's left. Ball just inside the right hash. Kelly. It's like he wants to change the play. Now a motion. Marquise to the right side. There's J.J. Connor in motion. He'll get it on the end of round. Gets a block from Lorenzo. Cuts it back inside. Close to the first down. Still fighting forward. And he'll have it on second effort. And again, we saw the officials let things play out in the first half on forward progress. They let that play play out. And J.J. Connor. Junior out of New Orleans, surged the pile forward just enough to get the first down. Gain of six. Ball just spotted right at the five-yard line. Just a physical physical play there. Those linemen do a good job getting up the field. The see has been hung up there, and they get that initial surge to fight forward, and the Lions uh, were in grim position there, first and 20 back. You know, they're own 25. They'll lumberjack 25. Now they got it first and goal at the five-yard line. And Teron Jones checks in. Cole Kelly. Uh, not sure it was a busted play or not. Keeps the football for a couple inside the five down to the three. Looks like he wanted to run a little option play, but Teron Jones blocked. Kelly broke a tackle in the backfield, fought forward for a couple. It's going to bring up second down and goal from the Lumberjack three-yard line. Third quarter, clock ticking down, 535 and counting. Lions clinging to a two-point lead, 19 to 7, 17. Ball just inside the right hash. Kelly's going to keep the football. Knifes his way forward. Falls for about a yard gain down to the two. So right here, if you're Greg Stevens, Frank Selfo, are you thinking two plays? I am, Mark. I really do. I think you, you, you use two plays to get this ball in the end zone here and get yourself up by over a touchdown again. And uh, clock is moving here, and you're getting towards the end of this third quarter. Seven here would be a big, big push as we make our way to the end of this uh, this uh, third quarter. Lions with two tight ends and a fullback. They'll motion Damian Dawson right side. Kelly takes the football, looks, wants to throw it. Now he's flushed, fires it away. That was incomplete. In a double coverage, wanted to go to the Tebow pass. and it's like he wanted to go to Dawson. Cole Kelly saying, I want to go for it here, and they're going to go for it from the two-yard line. He was adamant looking over toward the Lion bench saying, let's go for it. Cole's back there. He gets out of the pocket after the initial play wasn't there, Mark, and he keeps his eyes up. Lorenzo had a little bit of an opening there to get a pass into him. He was double covered. and uh, Guys, it's a full two yards, actually a little bit more than two yards. Vontae Williams checks back in. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Ed McGee motions right side. Branson Schwabel flex to the right. Kelly wants to throw all out blitz. Out of the backfield, touchdown. Wide open was Devontae Williams. Nobody picked him up. He's kind of ran Branson Schwabel to a little corner route. Flared Devontae out of the backfield. They came with an all out blitz. Cole Kelly at 6'7", just flipped it over the top for the touchdown. Really well designed play by Coach Stevens. Is he gets uh, SFA's eyes going to Branson, which is kind of the go-to down there, and just kind of slips Devontae out of the backfield, and just like that, he's able to get into the end zone of the Lions now. 25-17 with the extra point coming to make it a nine-point game with 4.41 to go here in the third quarter. These extra points have been anything but automatic today. Lions have already missed two. Jake okay, Rotenberry to snap. Jacob Williams to hold. Bryce Broussard will... Trying to give the Lions a nine-point lead. Snap is clean. Kick is up. And that one is good. Lions lead it 26-17. to 17, 441 to play third quarter. We'll take a break. You're listening to Lions football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Why do you support Southeastern Athletics? So Southeastern is where our family started. We uh, met my wife here, um, you know, met all our friends here, and now it's given us two beautiful children, and now it's part of our family. Alliance Mark Willoughby, Troy Granger, Ray Jacobs are our booth engineers, and Richie Clark is the producer of Lion Football. North Oaks Orthopedic Specialty Center provides expert bone, bone, joint, and muscle care for all ages from children to senior adults, little leaguers to elite athletes, and everyone in between. Connect with the physician's group 
at North Oaks Orthopedic Specialty Center in Hammond and Livingston at northoaks.org. North Oaks Health System is proud to serve as the official health care provider for Southeastern Louisiana University Athletics. To learn more about North Oaks Health System, you can find them at northoaks.org. Robbie, I think Southeastern uh, has, a, has a tough decision because, you know, Chasing Virgil is one of the leading passers in the Southland Conference. We're actually the, one of the leading passers in the country. But, man, Ch- uh, but Cole Kelly has looked very good on his two drives here today, very efficient. Both drives he's orchestrated and went down and scored touchdowns. Ten plays, 65-yard drives. Devontae Williams, two-yard pass reception from Cole Kelly. Taking a look at Kelly. His numbers in this football game, 10 out of 11 for 73 yards and a touchdown. Jason Virgil's 12 out of 16 for 90 yards. Bryce Broussard has it teed up into that wind. This will hang it high, and this will be returnable from the six. Across the 10, 15, looks for a crease. Breaks the tackle and uh, gets across the 30-yard line before Dwayne Thomas. Wraps up the ball carrier on the return for SFA and then the Lumberjacks will come back out on the field after a nice drive to draw the Lumberjacks within two on their last possession. Let's see if Coach uh, Gittery has made some adjustments, Mark. Had a long time on that sideline to, to get things drawn up right for his defense, and um, it's going to be imperative to slow this group down. Three wides left, one right for Trey Self. He'll turn, hand the ball left side, McGowan. He runs right into Trey Drake who met him right in the hole and shuts that down for no gain, maybe a loss on the play. That's well, about a loss of a half a yard. You saw Trey Drake just come flying up the field to fill that hole from his linebacker position. And as you see it coming, you know it's going to be a collision. He goes down low, and he gets him down in the midsection to stop the big runner from uh, getting anything second and ten for the Lumberjacks. Three freshman Alex Huzar checks into the ball game. Self to throw, looking. Pocket breaks down. He's flushed to his left, looking. He'll take off and run with it. And Huzar runs him out of bounds after a short gain of four. It's going to bring up third and six. So Alex Huzar from right down the road to Destrehan. He and Dontrell Smith have gotten some playing time. Actually, Dontrell Smith is in the game as well. Both freshmen from Destrehan. And uh, Coach Selfo very high on both young men. Number 87 for Stephen F. Austin. They're big tight ends that have come out of the game, Mark. He is holding his leg. Hope he's okay as he goes to the uh, Lumberjack bench. Big third down here for this Lion defense. Third and six. Self drops the throw. It's a three-man rush. Has time. Across the middle. That one's incomplete. I tell you what, Philando Jordan got his arms up just enough to upset the timing there with Xavier Gibson, who was the intended receiver. Just uh, had an open man there, Mark, but he threw it high. And as you said, Philando did enough. And good stop by the Lion defense. And... Uh, 349 to go here in this third quarter. The Lions getting the football back and uh, that'll bring Max Quick back on the field. Austin Mitchell stands back at his 20. Lumberjacks, really good specialty units today. They've kicked it and punted it very nicely. This is a short kick. It's going to be fair caught on the move. Uh, Austin Mitchell hauls it in at the 30, and Southeastern will come on the field first and 10. So nice job by Lance Gidry making adjustments defensively. Gets his football back. Southeastern up 26-17. And I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and take a timeout. Back in one minute, you're listening to Lions football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student-athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are... What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. The 
Southeastern on this next drive as we get ready to come out of the timeout. 3.42 to play third quarter. Southeastern leads at 26-17, but Southeastern never able to really get comfortable in this football game. Take your hat off to SFA. They came in here 1-7, Robbie, but they don't look like a 1-7 football team. No, and we knew that coming in. Coach Selfo talked about that, and they're very well coached. You just look at their coaching staff and their pedigree and, you know, what they've done in their careers so far. Um, they definitely know how to coach football, and, and they've got this group getting better as the year goes on, and, um, you know, they're going to be they're going to be tough for anybody down the stretch in the Southland. Lions are going to come out in the running formation with a tight end, two tight ends. Lined up on the right side, I formation under center is Chasen Virgil. He's going to turn, hand the ball straight ahead to Teron Jones, and a physical run for the sophomore out of Mandeville. Puts his shoulders down and gets about five or six on first down. Lions want to go with an up tempo. They'll go same formation. Under center on second and five. They'll turn, same play. Here's Teron Jones. I'll tell you what, he missed the hole right there. He had it inside. He bounced out and only gets a couple. Well, if he cuts that thing back inside, might might have picked up the first down, but it's going to bring up third and three. And then you can look at time possession, Mark, if you can pick this first down up, hopefully do it on the ground or in the air. You can start to wear on this SFA Lumberjack defense, who is thin a little bit with the young guys that they run out there. So um, as this game wears on, time possession is something key, especially after the last drive Southeastern just had where they marched down the field. Third down and three. They'll go from the shotgun, double slot formation, ball in the middle of the field. They'll come with a blitz on the out route, and that one's incomplete. Wanted to go to J.J. Connor. He was not looking for the football. Chasing uh, with the blitz, had to get rid of it early, and it's a three and out. Lions will have to punt it back to SFA. And the blitz uh, just wasn't picked up as they're talking to the offensive line as they come off the field. Is uh, just didn't go the right way and uh, missed that block. Austin Dunlap back on the field for the Lions. He's punted it twice in this ball game. His last punt was just 35 yards, but it was punted from the 35, went in the end zone. Of, it's a fake, and this one's going to be easy first down. This is Isaac Berglund, and he's got more across the 40, 30, and runs over a lumberjack at the 28-yard line, Isaac Berglund. And that's the second fake punt he's run in his career, ran one last year at, at, at Sam Houston that worked. And they pull off the trickeration again, and that part of the Red Sea. I don't yeah, think anybody you, expected that one, including us. You talked about the Lumberjacks on that uh, early punt possession in the first half where if they would have faked it there, they might have gotten a big yard. And you said part of the Red Sea. That was the part of the Red Sea. Allen, that one had to be coming from nowhere down there on the field because I know we certainly weren't expecting it up here. Well, yeah, Robbie, I was looking up and, and, I mean, looking down, and I looked back up, and Isaac was in the secondary. Lions want to throw it on first down. Here's the dump off to... Devontae looks for the side, cuts it back, and still on his feet. He'll have another first down inside the 15. That's all Devontae Williams, just a short toss out of the backfield from Jason Virgil. Just kind of hunting Peck over there and showed some nifty footwork to cut it back inside and picked up 11. And Southeastern will move the chains first and 10 at the SFA 15. We've seen some great punt fakes over the years here in this stadium, Mark, on the behalf of Southeastern, but that one uh, was about as simple as you get, but it's worked about as good as any of them. And a 36-yard gain for Berglund. Here's a play fake out of the backfield again. This is Austin Mitchell, and he shows some speed, gets to the sideline, cuts it back inside into the end zone. Austin Mitchell from Jason Virgil on just a little crossing route out of a, a speed sweep motion, just dumped it to him out in the flat, and Austin showed his speed, got to the corner, able to cut it back, find the end zone, and Southeastern finally gets a little bit of breathing room here. Well, Coach Stevens has done a good job in terms of trying to adjust to say, hey, they're not allowing us to do what we do offensively. So he's changing up his offense and actually running these shorter drag routes, trying to get guys in crossing patterns, trying to get SFA looking the wrong way and having a guy right there open. And that's a lot on Austin Mitchell, obviously, to make uh, the second play with his feet after catching the football, staying in bounds and getting up the field for a first down. And the extra point is through. That's a big one because it makes it uh, two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. 16-point lead for Southeastern, 33-17. 
126 to play here in the third quarter. We'll keep it right here. And it was all set up by that 36-yard fake punt run by Isaac Adeyemi Burger. And that's just the way football, uh, you know, is, Mark. You know, you have a situation there where Southeastern a little dejected. You couldn't do anything with that. And then uh, Coach Selfo and his special teams unit drop a great play. And that's Ross Jenkins, special teams coordinator, tight ends coach. And um, he does a great job of, 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 of scheming something, obviously something he saw on tape. And, boy, I mean, that was about as wide open of a fake run for Isaac as you can get. And he, he just... That showed some he just, speed, he too. Just some serious sure we speed. Knew he had. <laughs> Guys, I'll tell you this, too. Uh, you know, obviously, they, they had that schemed up and watched enough tape to know it was going to work. But that's a gutsy call. You know, if that doesn't work right there, they're going to have the football, uh, you know, down by nine inside our territory. So, gutsy call. It what paid off for Southeastern and allowed the Lions get uh, a nice little lead here. And I tell you, just overall, it's been a well-played, well-coached football game on both sides. You can see SFA making adjustments. Now you see Southeastern making adjustments. And uh, it's just a good college football game. Here's a high-hanging kick. So will settle down at the 8. Coming back near side. He's going to be wrapped up. And that's going to be Jocko Price, the senior out of Crowley, down in coverage. And he has uh, been very, uh, very good all year long yeah. in special teams. Yeah, I think Lorenzo Nunez and him have been really good in that kick coverage down there. They're big, long, really fast guys who can get down the field. Lions were offsides, looks like, on the kickoff. So... I would imagine. All sides. Number eight on the kicking team. Well, that's why Jack O'Price Price was Re-kick. down yeah. there early. He was offside, so Southeastern will have to kick it again. That's a, that's a big penalty because now you're, instead of having SFA bottled up inside their 15, we don't know what's going to happen after this kick. It'll be kicked off from the 30-yard line. You're into the wind, which seems to have died a little bit. Yeah, as the sun goes down here, it's starting to die out. Still a little bit of a breeze out of the north. Checking the penalty situation for both teams. Southeastern penalized five times, 46 yards. SFA four for 45. And it's those penalties right there that kind of drive Frank Selfo crazy. Those are the unforced uh, penalties, the false starts, the offsides right there, offsides on a kickoff. And we'll see if it's a big change in field position or not. Lions will have to re-kick it from their 30-yard line. Bryce Broussard tees it up here on a cool Saturday afternoon, now turning into evening here in Hammond, America, Strawberry Stadium. Lions lead at 33-17, 19 to play in the third quarter. This kick will settle in at the 11. Across the 15, across the 20, and uh, gets out to the 30-yard line. That's where he'll be hauled down. We'll see where they spot it. Right around the 29-30 yard line. 110 to go here in this third quarter with Southeastern on top 33-17 over Stephen F. Austin. The Lumberjacks coming into this game, uh, you know, one and seven football team. But you just look at their season mark and who they've played and how they've played them. Kind of throw out Baylor, throw out anything at the beginning of the season. Look at these last three uh, games. Two how well they played. Losses. Yeah, I mean, it's just a. A team getting better under a new head coaching regime, regime, playing a lot of young guys, and they're doing it here today. Trey Self still in the ball game, flushed out of the pocket, fires across the middle, has his tight end. That'll be a first down. Still fighting forward, and again, they continue to let the pile move. Hey, they are very slow to blow the whistle. We've seen that three times tonight. One Southeastern able to get a first down out yes. of it. And That's right there, another extra five, six yards. Certainly the betterment of each team. Still haven't seen uh, Xavier Lewis back on the field, Mark. Uh, he left in that uh, earlier in the quarter with a, a leg injury. Looks like he's okay. He's on, under his own power. He's standing up with his helmet on, waiting to come back in. He's shaking the hands of Lorenzo Nunez. Looks like he will make it back. First and ten from midfield. Here's a quick screen right side. And there will be another first down, down to the southeastern 38-yard line. So SFA, uh, Trey Self came in averaging about 250 yards a game passing. He's already over that mark now, and we're not even into the fourth quarter. I'm trying to rotate as many guys as they can up front, trying to get as much pressure with fresh players as they can here. SFA's done a pretty good job in pass protecting outside of a couple sequences in the first quarter. There's a low snap, wants to go deep. This ball is, should have been intercepted, but I think it was deflected away as Donnell Ward-McGee had a beat on it. 
and tried to cradle it, but it looked like the tight end got a hand on it. Was that Arkley's? I can't tell the number. Looked like that was number 47, Josh Allison, who just got his fingertip in there and knock it away from Donnell Ward-McGee. You see Coach Gidry down on the sideline. He's uh, he's coaching him up. He said, hey, because Donald kind of waited on the high, football. High point that he ball. said, go get it. You know what I'm saying? So right there, it's a situation where it could have been a pick, second and ten for the, for the Jacks. Two seconds to play in the third quarter. Self's going to play fake, looking to throw. Pocket breaks down. Lions got him from, behind, from the backside. He goes down to 44, and that is Alex Huzar and Stephen Wright on the pass rush. And the freshman racks up his first career sack, and with that, that will switch the third quarter. into the field. Southeastern will take a 33-17 lead into the fourth quarter, back in one minute on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student-athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are... What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Austin has the football in Southeastern Territory. They'll play at third and 16. When we get the fourth quarter underway, as we take a look at fourth or uh, stats of the three quarters, Southeastern with 21 first downs to 17 for the Lumberjacks. Lions, a very efficient game on the ground tonight. 25 rushes for 177 yards, 7.1 yards per carry. SFA, 24 carries for 41 yards for one. 0.7 yards per rush. Southeastern, uh, 24 out of 30 through the air, but the, the big story is SFA's not letting them get anything over the top. No explosive plays in the passing game. Southeastern just 190 yards passing uh, through three quarters to this point. SFA, on the other hand, 18 out of 30 for 260 yards and one interception. Southeastern also intercepted in this football game, so the turnovers at this point have canceled each other out. Southeastern, 55 plays, 367 yards to 54 plays for 301 yards for SFA. And that's where we stand. Mark, let's take a look at the scores around the Southland Conference, a final in Beaumont. As we said, Lamar missing their starting quarterback today, but Central Arkansas dominates the game 45-17. Over in San Antonio, UIW driving the football with 5.15 to go in the third quarter. They trail Nichols State 20-16. to 16. Uh, The Cardinals do the football first and 10 at the Nichols 46. And Northwestern State leads McNeese with 2.38 to go in the third quarter, 20-17. to 17. McNeese does have a fourth, at one, fourth and one at the Northwestern State 8-yard line. So now we'll see if they kick a field goal to try to tie that game. Lions bring in some pass rush personnel. On third down at 16, man across the board. Self in the pistol. Lions show pressure. He'll play fake. They'll rush four. Has time and uh, has a man that is caught on the rebound. Boy, ball was tipped by Chantres Spates, I believe. Caught on the rebound. That'll be a first down. That's well, just great uh, concentration by Ladarian Cobb. It was a man coverage on Chantres Spates. who was right there, but... Able to haul it down, and SFA keeps their hopes alive, trailing by 16, and they'll have it first and 10 at the line, 24. Here's another play fake. Has a screen set up. It's well designed and well blocked. And it cuts inside. It's going to come back. There was a hold out in front on Trey Drake. Looks like number 66, the offensive lineman, Keegan Holm, was out in front and had a lot of jersey, it looked like. Yeah. Drake was on his back on the ground. We're trying to watch the play, but he's uh, he's down and out. So that'll back SFA up and make it first and 20 for them. Back uh, 
right around there. Line 34. It's going to wipe out a big gain instead of play first, down. first and goal. It's going to bring up first and about 13, it looks like. Like they're going to mark this off from around the 17 or 18. Uh, they had a great play call there because Alex Huzar was blitzing off the right end and they threw it right into the teeth of the blitz. And luckily for Southeastern, they had a hold. Well, replay first down, but it'll be first and 13 from the Southeastern 28 yard line. 14 28 to play in this football game. Southeastern leads at 33 to 17, but the Lumberjacks uh, just won't go away. They've played very well and Represented themselves very well in this one. One and seven coming in, but we all know they're a lot better football team than that. They have two overtime losses on the year. And that'll be another five yards as the slot uh, man tight end lined up in the slot jumped off sides or illegal motion. On the offensive team, five yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. They'll make it first and 18 back to the 33 yard line. SFA went to Cedar City, Utah, play Southern Utah. They lost that game 45-38. Also lost to ACU in overtime. Here's a quick screen right side. And uh, getting a nice block and breaking a tackle up close to a first down. Just a little quick screen. Southeastern lined up in man coverage, and SFA is going to move the chains again. I think they're going to mark him just short. He just swing it out to Ladarius Cobb, got a block, and boy showed some speed to pick up 17. Clock should be running, Mark, as they're letting this thing uh, hold at 14.04. It should have started when they marked it ready for play. That's what I thought, too. I'll hand the ball right side, and that'll be a first down down to the 13-yard line. So, Southeast, I'll tell you what, SFA's passing game today, you come in, you, you scout Trey Self. He was just a little bit over 50% coming in for about 250 yards per game, and you look up in this one, he's 21 out of 33 for over 300 yards, 304 yards passing. They'll throw it again here. Fade route, back corner of the end zone, touchdown, wide open. Just beat uh, man coverage for Lando, just got turned around, and SFA is right back in it. See if they go for two here down 16, and they will. Yeah, they're just a... Uh, single coverage outside route run, and he uh, just gets him turned around. The Lions brought pressure again, and he threw out there to single coverage, and he had him turned around. Here's a big, a big two-point conversion, Mark. Obviously, that can uh, make this a one-score game if you. Uh, so if Lance Gittery comes from comes with some pressure here. Two-point conversion. He'll spot the ball in the left hash or just inside the left hash. He'll flex three wides out to the right. Lone setback. Self to throw. Looking. Cross the middle. That one's incomplete. That's a big miss right there. Keeps it a 10-point game, 33-23. Lions on top by 10 with 13-34 to play in this football game. We'll go ahead and take a timeout. We'll come back in 60. You're listening to Lions football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Faye drives the football for a touchdown. 
with 13.34 to go in the fourth quarter. A two-point conversion fails, but keeps this game at 33-23. Let's look at the scoring drive mark. That was a nine-play, 70-yard drive, 236 off the clock. Trey Self to Xavier Gibson from 12 yards out. The big play was a conversion on third and 16. Then you got a... A uh, big pickup on first or second and uh, 17 or 18 to get 17 yeah. yards on a little quick screen, kind of keep the drive alive, and then a fade route to the back corner of the end zone of Xavier Gibson. So well-orchestrated drive, able to overcome some adversity was SFA, and they're right back in it, trailing 33 to 23. But if you're Southeastern, you just got to play tit for tat here. Any, uh, any help that the wind was giving, it was a pretty significant factor uh, throughout the entire first three quarters is pretty much as the sun's gone down and become nothing here. Barely any breeze in the stadium right now, so uh, Southeastern thought they might have that to their advantage going in the fourth quarter. It's not going to matter as uh, SFA will kick this one off from the 35-yard line. It's always got to be alive for a surprise onside kick. Not sure they would try it this early in the game, but you never know the way Southeastern's move the football. They will kick it deep. This will be returnable from the goal line, Austin Mitchell. Across the 5-10. Got a little bit of a crease across the 25, upended at the 27-28. That's where Southeastern will put it in play first and 10. As Austin slow getting up, a little bit shaken up. Looked like he might have taken a shot in the thigh as he was kind of tumbled over. Yeah, he was kind of hit and fell awkward there, Mark, as uh, SFA booms it deep and... Uh, Southeastern's offense to come back on the field if they're going to stay with Chase and Virgil here. They've been rotating quarterbacks with Cole Kelly, and they'll stay with Chase in here in crunch time, up by 10 with 13.27 to go in the game. Yeah, it looks like Greg Stevens has found something in that power under center formation. They'll come out with a tight end and a wing, eye formation under center. Tight end motion left. They'll toss it right. This is Teron Jones. Looks for the edge, and he'll be hauled out of bounds after a short gain of a couple. Giving three on the play to bring up second. That will call it a long seven. They'll spot it at the 31-yard line. Clock running, 13-17 to go in the fourth quarter. Lions lead at 33-23. Teron Jones stays in the ball game. They'll go from the shotgun. They'll spread two wide to the left, one to the right with a tight end. Schwabel lined up on the right side. They'll motion Ed McGee. Across the formation. He'll get it out of the backfield. One man to beat. Tries to shake him and uh, cannot. Gets uh, across the 35, and that's about it. Boy, so he was one-on-one -on -one if yeah. he could have got to the corner. He might have gotten a few more yards there, almost the first down. So here's a big third down for Southeastern. Third and three, Mark. Picked up four on that play. Third down and three. Lions need to get to just outside the 38-yard line, it looks like. Three wides, a line up to the right, one to the left. Ball spotted on the left hash. Devontae Williams checks back in. Chase and Virgil, they'll come with blitz right up the middle. Fires it away, threw it too soon. He had Devontae, and Chase had, had pressure right in his face, and he dumped it away too soon. That would have been an easy first down. So Southeastern's going to have to punt it again. They've ran that a couple times, Mark, where it hadn't worked in that fashion on third downs. Uh, the first time, Devontae didn't turn for the football. That one he did just a little too late, and... Uh, Austin Dunlop comes on the field to punt this one here. Uh, with, and uh, both times they come with middle pressure, and Chasen's yeah. kind of felt it a little bit early. Yeah. So Dunlop in the punt it away, 12-22 to play. And that's a big stop for SFA. They have shown they can move the football here in this third quarter. Now Dunlop with the rugby-style punt. Line drives going to – did that hit, hit a man? Him. I'm not sure if it did or not. Lions are saying it uh, – I don't know. It's going to roll inside the 10. And Southeastern's going to pin it at about the five-yard line. Thought number 20 was in the area. Don't think it got him. That was Jacoby Sheffield. And it's going to roll dead just inside the six. So a nice effort once again by Austin Dunlap. Mark Robbie, I think I'll be the first to admit that in fall camp that we were worried about having a true freshman punter. But, man, Austin Dunlop has had a fantastic year. I know we got a long way to go, but he's been pretty good here in his freshman campaign. Try to take a peek at how far that punt traveled, 58 yards. It's a lot of it on the roll, but I tell you, he does that rugby-style punt so well. He's athletic enough. He can be on the move, still strike it well. Now, we saw him 
I think hit one about 55 yards in the air on a rugby punt at Ole Miss. So 12.06 to play. We'll go ahead and take a timeout. Lions lead at 33-23. You're listening to Lions Football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. What opportunity has Southeastern provided you that you will forever be thankful for? Southeastern has given me the education I need for my future. Whether or not I go pro, I know I'm going to be successful. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19. With the Lions leading by 10, 33 23, with 12.06 to play in this football game. Pistol formation, and we've got some movement up front. Stephen Wright came across. I jumped up and pointed really quickly a here, Mark. Lumberjack so. moved. I'm not sure. There was the, some movement. The tailback moved. The tailback took two steps forward like the, the play was starting. Well, that's kind of what I saw. And then Stephen Wright moved and the right guard moved. And they're going to tell us. It's like it's going to go against Outside. South, Southeast. Contact by the defense in the neutral zone, number 55. Five yards from the previous spot. And Both that's that. a killer penalty because now it makes it first and five and you get them off the shadow of their own end zone. Guys, I'll tell you, what, what initiated all the movement was that the tailback moved. That's kind of what I saw. I saw some movement before, but didn't see anything in the interior offensive line. First and five. Ball at the 11. Self's going to throw quickly. Man gets in his way, but it's caught. Sean Tress Spates drops him right there, but that'll be a first down. Self. Uh, looked like he wanted to throw quick. The fullback got in his way, and he still got it out there complete. And Southeastern continues to struggle in the secondary. Right there, uh, Chantrez Spates, a lot of cushion, an easy catch and throw and catch. First and 10 from the 16. Self's going to throw again. Lions with pressure right up to his face, and they got him flushed. Right side, dumps it away, incomplete, out of bounds. Trey Span on the coverage. And again, right there, good pass rush up front. We saw Berglund look like Josh Carr. Is that uh, Herman Kristoff, I believe? Freshman out of Plaquemine. Dwayne Thomas also with the pressure. And, Mark, you just mentioned about the secondary. One thing that we haven't talked about is no Dejon Lynch here today. He's on the sideline in street clothes. No Dejon Lynch and no Xavier Lewis here in the second half. Lando Jordan playing safety now. Another quick throw to the right side. This time he stumbles and runs right into Alexis Ramos. And that little stumble was just enough to allow Ramos to rally and hit him in for about a three-yard gain. It's going to bring up second or excuse Julio me, third the field and about the ball six. carry was down before the ball became loose. Now the ball came out. Uh, they're going to say he was down. We'll bring up third down at six. Ball at the 20-yard line. Lumberjacks need to get to the 26. And you got to watch Lumberjacks here running one of those little screen plays, Mark. You know, the you lines are going to try to come after him. Yeah, what else you got to watch is a little stop and go. Southeastern's been bite, biting up here the last couple of plays. On third and six, Self on a low snap, dumps it away. This is caught, and it's going to be a first down right in front of Spates. And they just continue to give him that soft coverage, and they're going to take it all day long. So you got an offsides and Two short throws, and SFA has it off of their six-yard line out to the 27. We wind down uh, around 10 and a half minutes to play and ticking in this fourth quarter. Southeastern leading 33-23. Self drops, looking, has pressure. Isaac's got him, and the ball is out. And it is picked up out of the air by the tight end. That's going to be... A completed pass. Uh, they're going to still let the play run. They continue. I tell you and, what, these uh, officials got to learn to blow the whistle. Yeah, and uh, well, he took a big hit hurt. there. Self uh, holding his right arm. Ball came out on contact and went right into the hands of. Is that their tight end or? The only on the field was a fumble recovered by the offense. It'll be a big loss back to the 18-yard line. It's going to bring up second down, and we'll, uh, we'll call it 18. 
Clock now running at 9.45 to go in the game. And still lead by 10. And pressure's been there, Mark. They take advantage of it. They don't get the sack there, but the way the play develops, you get a big loss anyway. Sell so stays in the ball game. He'll drop the throw again. Has pressure again. Fires it away, and this one's incomplete. I tell you what, Chantres Spates nearly got his hands on that one. I think it was just enough to distract the receiver who couldn't hang on. That was uh, Remy Simmons, the intended receiver, couldn't hang on. Falls incomplete, but Spates got his hand up just enough to distract Simmons. So it's third and long. We've seen SS SFA convert one of these earlier in the third quarter. They got to get all the way up to the 37. Lumberjack 37, yeah. Pistol formation, two wide to either side. They'll motion a receiver. Now he returns back to where he came from, drops the throw, has time, looking. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He'll take off and run with it. And this is Trey Self, and he'll be short. Ball comes out. Southeastern's on it. And let's see if he's down. He gave himself up, and a flag comes in. And I think they're going to call targeting on Southeastern. I don't him. think the he ever made contact. The field said the ball carrier was down before the fumble. No, he, he never hit him. He went up. He went. Yeah. I don't think he made contact either. Alan, did you get a look at it? I think, I think he just gave himself up and dropped think, the football. Deal? Hey, guys, you got me? Yeah. We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Uh, the only thing I saw is that when he dove over, he hit the football. I thought he's the one who knocked the football over. I didn't think he touched the, the, the quarterback at all. Well, it'll get reviewed one way or the other. But Southeastern's come up on the wrong end of that's about all to, of those this year. Unless they're going to try to call a we'll hit see. on a defenseless player. Well, he gave it himself still be a, There's no way. Oh, there's, missed no, him. there's no contact. The ruling on the field is that the ball carrier was down prior to losing possession. There is no foul on the play. Now, that's a good pickup right there by Ed Bush while he talked about it. And it looked a lot worse than it did because he gave himself up. He's sliding backwards. He had that kind of missile I know it's fourth down, Launch. but did you see the, the replay? Did the ball come out? I mean, I thought when he dove over him, he dove over and hit the ball. Well, they're saying the ball came out uh, once he fell to the ground, so uh, no turnover. They're reviewed anyway. Punting unit on the field for SFA. Austin Mitchell stands back inside his 30. Snap is clean, and here's a fake, and they're going to pick it up. And I tell you what, saw that one coming all the way. The Southeastern just bailed out, and they take off and run it, and it's first down SFA. You just cannot run out of there. Yeah, that's uh, same play the Lions ran. Now the SFA Lumberjacks with the momentum all across the 50-yard line in the Lions territory at the 49. I mean, that's the first thing you have to anticipate. Well, the difference between the one like with the, what the Lions did, Robbie, is the punter just ran that one. Yeah. He just caught the snap and took off running, and we had bailed out of there. You just can't do that. That's a uh, new quarterback in the game. Big mistake by Southeastern. New quarterback in the football game for SFA. Yeah, Self had gotten hurt on that last possession. They're going to hand the ball left side. This is... McGowan on the carry, picks up about four. I'll call it three, so he's out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Trey Spann on the tackle. Yeah, when you get a fake like that, what it does is keeps the drive alive. The more the defense is on the field, it just it's like diminishing returns. You can't stay on the field more than seven, eight, nine, ten plays, and it just extends the drive. And Well, guys, when you have a ten-point lead and, and there's only eight minutes left to go in the game, the possessions are certainly very valuable. Just play defense and let them punt it to you and get uh, the football exactly. back. Exactly. But Josh McGowan pretty dinged up down here on the near sideline as he took a big spill running the football. He's in a lot of pain down there. Both Lion training staff and SFA training staff have come across the field to take a look at him. So the Lumberjacks go into a backup quarterback. I, I On the last uh, offensive posi position for the Lumberjacks, I thought Self got pretty banged up, and they're going to their backup quarterback, Cam Arnold, who um, – He's a freshman. He's a 6'1", 205-pound freshman out of Cypress, Texas. Cypress Fair High School over there, as uh, you see McGowan going off the field under his own power, but he was in a lot of pain down on the sideline after he got a four-yard, three-yard pickup on first down. You know, especially after you've just faked one. <laughs> yeah. You, you just can't fall for that. that I, mean, I, I realize you got a return set up, but you got to see the ball away. 
It'll be second down and seven with 8-12 to play in this fourth quarter. Southeastern leading 33-23, but Trey Self not on the field for SFA. He's thrown for over 300 yards in this football game. It's Cam Arnold, a freshman. He'll operate from the pistol, two wides to the right. He'll play fake, wants to throw, looking. Pressure in his face, and that's a great throw and catch. There'll be another first down to the line, 35. Isaac Berglund hit him right in the mouth and gives him a pat on the helmet for a job well done for the freshman because he was able to stand in there and find his receiver, and the Lumberjacks move the chains. He's a uh, not as tall of a young man, but uh, has a nice arm and makes a good throw there on second down to pick it up. So the Lion 35, he'll quick screen. That was picked off, and it's going to come back the other way for the third time in 2019. Fernando Jordan to the house. The Lions with six points, 39-23. And Orlando was... Jordan jumped the out route, and they've been doing that all night long. And Lance Gidry makes the adjustment. Fernando jumped it, and that is his third pick six of 2019. Wow. And that was just telegraphed all the way. He kind of caught the snap. He kind of made a slow motion with his body, almost like a jump stop to throw the football out there. It took a while to get out there, and Fernando saw it, jumped it, and housed it. And the Lions, just like that for the second straight week, Mark, as you said, get points off of a turnover. And now they have pushed their lead up with the extra point to 17 with 7-17 to go in this game. Uh, it's a 16-point lead. Extra point will make it 17, and it's through. And that's a big extra point because now it's a three-score lead. And for Lando Jordan, has three picks in 2019. All three have gone to the house. Had a pick six against Jacksonville State. Had one last week against Houston Baptist. And, of course, this one, which hopefully turns out to be the difference in this one with 7-17 to play. We'll take a one-minute break. Lions lead it 40-23. to You're listening to Southeast Lions football on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Why do you support Southeastern Athletics? So Southeastern is where our family started. We uh, met my wife here. Um, you know, met all our friends here, and now it's given us two beautiful children, and now it's part of our family. Mark Willoughby, Robbie Rhodes, Alan Waddell back with you. 7-17 to play in this fourth quarter. Southeastern has opened up a 17-point lead after Fernando Jordan returned a Cam Arnold pass. 65 yards with his third pick six of the year. And Southeastern has uh, broken open what was a two-score game with SFA driving a chance to cut it to one score. And just like that, momentum changes. But on the extra point, Isaac Adeyemi Berglund was shaken up, come off, came off the field under his own power. But uh, looked like he was holding his upper extremity a little bit, so not sure what the status is with him. It was he, he has gone into the tent, Mark, so I'll keep you posted on what's going on with Isaac. Bryce Broussard has it teed up, moving left to right on your radio dial. Freshman approaches the football, hangs it high and returnable from the six. Across the 15 and across the 30, 35. Cuts back inside, still on his feet up to the 40-yard line. Nice return by SFA. So, again, they still won't go away here with 7.07 to play. Nice return. Devontae Powers in coverage for Southeastern. We'll see if it's Arnold or Trey Self for SFA. Still going to be Cam Arnold. So Self must have been banged up pretty pretty good over there on that. Uh... Guys, Isaac is out of the tent. Uh, he's not in the football game right now, but he's got his helmet on. So I'm not sure if he'll go back in this football game or not. Dwayne Thomas checks in. Uh, first down, empty formation. Cam Arnold drops the throw. Four-man rush across the middle. It's a diving catch. It's caught. That is 
Gibson, who slides and makes the catch, leading receiver for SFA, and he's had a nice after or nice afternoon. That'll move the chains in the Lion territory to 48-yard line. Gibson nine catches in this ball game. Again, empty formation, three wides left, two to the right. Lions will rush four. Pressure and another wide open receiver. Southeastern dropped off in a very soft zone. That'll move the chains inside the 30. That's just way too much cushion to give. Dontrell Smith kind of bailed out of there, and they find Lawton Raquel. So in two plays, SFA right back in Southeastern territory at the 29. Still a lot of time to play, 6-22 and counting. Arlo the throw out of an empty formation. Cross the middle. That's caught. I'll tell you what, he's coming and throwing the ball well. That'll be another gain of 10. That'll be just short of the first down. Gain of nine. They'll call it. You know, it's crazy. The last two weeks, Southeastern played probably two of the most explosive passing games in the Southwood Conference. Held both of them under 200 yards passing. And SFA not really known for an explosive passing game. They've put up close to 400 yards. Yeah, they're exploiting the line injuries in the secondary right now, and they're doing it well, both these quarterbacks. Play fake Arnold across the middle, wide open. This will be an easy touchdown. Nobody home, and uh, that was very easy. Ladarian Cobb with a touchdown. And just like that, you thought you had a cushion, and here they come marching down the field with a big kickoff return, and yeah, you know, four or five quick, easy plays, and they're in the end zone. Try to make this a ten-point game again. Well, if you're not going to cover them, you got to pass rush. Yeah. You got to at least send some pressure or get to the quarterback. But I mean, they're not—they're not even close. Guys, and no disrespect to Trey Self, but this young man—I think he throws the football better than him. I mean, he's—he's uh, he's throwing darts out here. Uh, he's been very impressed. Both quarterbacks have been. And this for a 10-point deficit is good. 40 to 30, 531 to play. We'll keep it right here. Southeastern on top, but SFA again continues to hang around. This is a team we're going to hear from a lot over the next two or three years. Colby Carthel, uh, his dad was Donnie Carthel. Donnie Carthel, I think is how they pronounce it. Longtime head coach at West Texas A&M. Mike Lucas coached with him, former Southeastern head coach. They're very good friends. I know that family. And, and uh, Colby Carthel is... Has a national championship under his belt at Texas A&M Commerce a couple of years ago. He's had a couple of deep playoff runs at the D2 level. He's a very charismatic guy, type of coach that will kind of play well in living rooms of recruits. And, of course, East Texas, that's a great recruiting base. He's going to get this program turned around. You can see it here tonight. There's a little bit shorthanded with experience. But uh, they've been in each and every ball game this year and even led Sam Houston in the fourth quarter. Uh, the McNeese fighting. game last week was tight in the second half before McNeese blew that one open. They won it 33-10, but that game was a lot closer. He had an overtime loss at Southern Utah, overtime loss at Abilene Christian. So they, Beat uh, Lamar at Lamar. Onside kick coming here for SFA. I'm sure they would do that, Mark, with 5.31 to go here with three timeouts. Well, I think they already have to now because you're down two scores. And this is going to be fielded. At the 47, and that is, is that uh, Bryson, uh, Brands? No, that's Blasio. the Blasio. Yeah. snatched it out of the air. Fans, we're in the Gateway Ford broadcast booth, brought to you by Gateway Ford and Ponchatoula, offering sales service and collision repair. They've been serving the North Shore since 1983. Check them in their inventory out at gatewayford.net. And don't forget, Gateway gives the deals. Fans can check out the all-new 2019 Ford Ranger, 0% financing through the end of the year. It's the end of the year sales event at Gateway Ford. And also enjoy the digital access to Southeastern player bios through the Lion Game Day Experience app. You can get live scoring updates, social media feeds, and much more. The new mobile app, which provides for custom notifications and support for audio and video broadcasts, is available for download in the App Store and Google Play. Well, as we go with Cole Kelly, and on first down, he breaks a run across the 30-yard line of SFA, and he'll rip off a game of close to 20. As Cole Kelly just ran a little counter play out of basically a Wildcat look, and Gets a block over there, kind of went uh, against the strength of the formation. And Southeastern deep in Lumberjack territory, first and 10 at the 25-yard line. So Cole Kelly back in the football game, and got to figure we'll see a heavy dose of him. Yeah, don't have to snap it here till under five minutes in the ball game. They get on first down there for Cole. 
Teron Jones in the game is the bigger of the backs for Southeastern. This will be Teron on a little swing out of the backfield. He'll have another four or five yards. Cole Kelly, seven carries, 43 yards, has two touchdowns at a four-yarder on the opening series of the ball game and another one-yard quarterback sneak later in the second quarter. Second down and six, four and a half minutes to play. SFA has all three timeouts. Lions right here are in field goal range, but, of course, the way they have executed extra points, not sure field goal is something Frank Selfo's thinking here up 10. Second down and six. He'll go under center. He'll turn, hand the ball away. Teron Jones has got it. Slips a tackle, runs over a man. He's close to the first down, short by a couple. Will be inside the 20, down to the 18. That will make it a 17. And got to think right here, probably four down territory for Southeastern. A field goal puts you up 13, but it's still a two-score deficit for SFA. So got to be thinking that Frank Selfo is – Thinking four down territory. Ron Jones stays in. Matt de Blasio and Branson Schwabel in the football game. Lined up at tight end on the right side. Under 10 minutes on the play clock. Kelly will go under center. He'll turn, hand it away. This is Teron Jones. He'll reach out close to the first down as he had it. And I think one official has him on the line. The other does not. If he's touching the line, it's a first down. Timeout called by SFA quickly. With they're going to call it a fourth down. The line judge came running in immediately with his hand up uh, with a fist. So it's going to be fourth down here, fourth and about a half a yard uh, for Southeast. Timeout. Stephen F. Austin. They're first. 30-second timeout. Well, I think this is anything other than a Please reset the state. game clock to three minutes and 24 seconds. Please Mark. reset the game, game clock to three, two, four. Mark, while we can, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification for all of our affiliates along the Lions radio network. You're listening to Southeastern Lion Athletics right here on 90.9 FM. KSLU Hammond, part of the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. And we'll just pass the note, the three pick sixes on the season by Fernando George, a new school record. Devontae Williams has 11 catches. The school record is 13. In a game that was Felton Huggins, I believe, back in 2004. So Delonte Williams was too shy, hasn't uh, been in the ball game the last couple of series. SFA now with two timeouts, Mark. You picked this up, it's not the game, but it's pretty darn close. You can almost salt it down pretty pretty low on the clock, needing two possessions for the Lumberjacks. Well, the question is here, do you? Just quarterback sneak under center, or do you go in the – they're going to go under center. So Kelly sneaks the football and got a flag down. If that's on Southeastern, that's, uh, that's a timeout called by SFA before – I think they might have had too many men yeah, on the field. Yeah, they had too many men on the field. So that's a killer timeout. It's, it's got to be either too many men or, or – oh, they called timeout. They gave them the timeout, wow, because they ran a defensive lineman on late mark, and he was obviously off sides. Well, the timeout always – Timeout. That's Stephen a, F. Austin takes precedence. But either way, flags. that's a big timeout. Yeah, that's one left. a 30-second timeout. There are your, no fouls on the play. You lose your timeout there. So uh, I think you saw the preview of this play, Mark. I think they're going to come out and do the same thing again and, you know, run Cole. Uh, well, the thing is, even if you don't make it, SFA is going to come on the field at their 15-yard line. You have one timeout and 324. It's going to take you. Uh, at least to probably a minute, minute and a half, if even if you have execute a well-executed drive to yeah. put the ball in the end zone. Then you got to turn around and get an onside kick with just one timeout. So Frank Selfo understands that. And field goals are no sure thing no doubt. by any stretch. And even if you make it, you're still only up by 13. So Cole Kelly's going to line up and try to fight forward and pick this up. And uh, he's going to have it easily. They push him forward for about three or four. And you just can't stop that. He's it's hard. Unstoppable on a quarterback sneak. Now, nobody has the interior size up front. Even if you are, even if you do have a th couple 300 pounds, it's just hard to fight stop off a guy that. at six, seven, yeah. that kind of forward. And, and, if, and he's going right over a guy who's the strongest guy on the team. I mean, Drew Jones is the strongest lineman that the Lions are going to have in there. He's a, he's a really good center in the interior of the line. And Cole's just following him. And it's like you said, Mark, it's tough for anybody to stop that. 
That's why he was successful at the Southeastern Conference. Now, Southeastern can't run the clock out by kneeling it. They're going to have to snap it and hand the ball off. This will be Teron Jones. He's got a nice opening. It closed up, though, and uh, looked like he was going to have more than that. Only got a couple on the play, but it was pretty good blocking over on that right side. Brendan Miles' character and company, also big Alfred Beverly. Only gets a couple to bring up second down at eight. SFA still has one timeout. They'll probably use it after this play. Yeah. And they had to use a timeout, Mark, because if Twelman on the field, it would have been a penalty anyway. They had to gamble and you know give up the timeout to not get the automatic first down and, and force the Lions to run the fourth down play because, like you said, you just never know what can happen there. Play clock inside of 10. Cole Kelly will go under center with strong formation. Eye to the right. They'll turn, hand it off to Jones. He's got a hole right side, cuts it back inside. Inside the five, down to the two. That'll bring up a first and goal at the two. Southeastern, see if SFA chooses to use a timeout, they could probably kneel it out from here if SFA doesn't use one. Big physical we'll hard if, running by Teron Jones in there. See if Colby Carthel just says we're going to throw in the white flag here and see if Frank Selfo just takes a knee. I think that's, now we'll see. They got De Blasio in at fullback. I think they are going to. Run a regular snap. They'll do it out of the gun. Just got to make sure you get a good snap. They'll snap it with three. Teron Jones straight ahead. Piles forward short of the goal line. 122 and counting. Southeastern is going to win the football game. It's just a matter of whether they punch one in here or they win by 10. And you set yourself up for a huge game next week in Conway, Arkansas. Maybe one of the bigger games. And the Lions have had since going back to that Sam Houston State game in 2017 here at Strawberry Stadium. It's a game with huge implications in the Southland Conference. And uh, you know, Central Arkansas gets a win today against Lamar. They're going to be uh, excited to get back home to take on the Lions and what will be a big contest. Lions will snap it one more time on second. And goal from the gun. Here is Teron Jones. He is in the end zone for the touchdown. And Southeastern has opened up a 46-30 lead with 37 seconds to play. That was kind of a tricky spot right there for Frank Selfo. Do you run a play? They, they still have a timeout, theoretically. Uh, they could have used it right there, maybe forced you to a field goal, get it back. You're probably just not going to have enough time to do anything with it. So yeah. not sure Colby Carthel would have called the timeout. And you see Coach Selfo down there as uh, he just totally gives congratulations to his offensive line. Alfred Beverly, Drew Jones, Pat Allen, Jarius Gooch. A lot of guys who have played really well today. We sorry for the extra point is good. If you're thinking of the Southeastern run up the score here, you also got to look at it too. Voters are pollsters and committees and all that around the country. They look at margin of victory. So when you get in that meeting room, if Southeastern is able to win out or win seven games, you need some body of work. And a 47-30 win looks a lot better than 40-30. to 30. So uh, certainly don't want to run the score up, but a lot of times cosmetics do matter. Southeastern leads 47-30, 37 seconds to play. And, Robbie, a good football game here today. I thought both teams came to play, and both coaching staff did a great job making adjustments. Southeastern just made a, a few more, had a little bit more experience, and were able to pull away here to win 47-30. to 30, But game was much closer than that. Absolutely. It was a close game. It's been what um, SFA's done all year, battling teams to the very end. And guys, uh, Cole Kelly, what about his efficiency? Yeah, it, really. it, it seems like every time he comes in to start a drive, they, it ends in six points. And a, and a huge thanks to uh, our buddy Colton and uh, Kelmer Chapel, Damon Sunday, all the folks in the Sports Information Department doing the first uh, sync up of the Southeastern Sports Network to our radio broadcast for today's ESPN video. So uh, hope it went well here as a fair catch is going to be called here. Yeah. 37 seconds, SFA will come on the field. Uh, Fair catch inside the 25-yard line. First down on the 25. 37 ticks to do something with his football. I'd say it's a good chance for Cam Arnold, the freshman. We've seen him execute a couple of drives for SFA, but gives him a few more snaps here, if, especially if Trey Self can't go after this. Allows him a chance to maybe throw three or four more balls in this ball game. The 
the Lions will defeat SFA for the second consecutive year. Now a quirk in the scheduling. Haven't played the Lumberjacks the last two seasons. SFA and Sam Houston alternate coming on and off the schedule. That game in uh, 2016 mark was a lot like this where it was uh, Lions kind of got that pick six in the, in the, in the fourth quarter to kind of strip the lead out. It was a much closer game than that final score indicated. No question about it is uh, Lumberjacks choose to take a knee and that's going to do it. Lions will walk out of here 47 to 30 winners in a game that was uh, very competitive and we knew it would be as the coaches and team shake hands at midfield and sets up a big one next week at uh, Conway in Conway, Arkansas. Southeastern will be on the road to take on Central Arkansas next week. I believe that's a 3 p.m. kickoff. Yes. 3 p.m. kickoff, 2.30 air time. Next time you can hear the network will be on Monday night, 7 o'clock, Allen. We'll have uh, Coach Selfo for Inside Southeastern Football, so that'll be a really uh, interesting show. Uh, we'll be, I'll be at uh, Coach Selfo's media availability, which will also be streamed on the Southeastern Sports Network. Uh, on Monday. I'll tell you what, let's keep it right here. We'll go ahead and throw it down to Allen. He'll have Frank Selfo once he finishes his congratulatory. Here's handshakes. the plan, guys. They're gonna they're gonna go over there by the band, and we're gonna get him on the walk back. So uh, tell you what, we'll just we'll stay here because uh, well, we'll catch you on the back side of the break, Allen. Let's go ahead and take a two minute break. Back in two minutes, Lions win at 47:30. You're listening to Southeastern Sports Radio Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Forty-seven to thirty over a very scrappy and uh, up-and-coming uh, Stephen F. Austin team, who came in one and seven, but gave Southeastern all they could handle here today. Southeastern had to play well today; they did. Had a couple of mistakes, had a turnover uh, in there, and a couple of the drop balls. But otherwise, I thought Southeastern was ready to play today. Very well coached on uh, both sides of the football. Both teams made adjustments. Just a good college football game, yeah. but the Lions were able to pull away. Uh, late and win at 47 to 30. All right, guys, let me join here. I got Coach Sulfo. And Coach, uh, this was a game that you kind of had to grind it out as they didn't want to give you any big plays, explosive plays over the top. Actually ran the football more than you threw it today. Uh, rushed for over 200 yards in this game. Talk about your offensive performance. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I thought they had a great scheme. You know, credit to those guys. They weren't. We, we wanted to take some shots, and we tried early on, but their coverage is they kept rotating back, and uh, they really played deep, so they forced us to throw everything underneath, which we did. We were patient. But I thought our offensive line ended up taking over this thing. You know, you got a chance to wear people down, and I thought we did that. So I was pretty happy with that part. 
obviously it's big when you can score on defense. Fernando jumps in front of that pass. That was certainly a big play in the game. His third pick six of the year, that's a school record. That was a big, big play in this game. Well, it was. You know, I mean, we had a lot of big plays that kept things going. You know, the fake punt with Isaac was awesome. Uh, you know, we had some other big first downs that we picked up. But I think, you know, when you when you always look for somebody to make a play, Philando's come up big for us three times this season. And, uh, you know, you just can't overlook those things. It doesn't just happen. Uh, it's a guy that practices hard every day, and he does what he's supposed to do, and he works his tail off, and things like that come to people uh, come to people who do those things. Coach, as a spectator, I thought the word tonight was was probably efficient. I thought your offense was really efficient tonight. Yeah, you know, when you when you don't have the opportunity to make big plays, you got to you got to figure out other ways to do it. So now you become that 12, 15 play drive to score touchdowns, and that's hard, man. You got to grind those things out. That means a lot of things got to go right during the course of that series. And for us to come up with 47 points against this team, that's pretty doggone good. Coach, uh, coming out of the bye week, we talked about, the, you know, it was kind of a five-game season. Well, you've got the first two. You beat HBU last week, got this one, and now a big one next week at UCA, a team you're staring up at at the standings. Every, all your goals still in front of you. Where's your team at with three games left? Oh, we're excited, ready to go. You know, I think uh, when you look at what we got coming up, we'll enjoy this one, spend 24 hours, come back in tomorrow and start grinding on UCA and get ready for next week's game because it's, again, going on the road in this conference and uh, – and, and you never know what's going to happen. Halloween's over with, but there's a lot of trick-or-treats out there. All right, Coach, well, good luck next week, and congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys, back to y'all. As you, you just heard it, uh, I think he's proud of this team's effort. Came out, and I thought SFA had a good game plan. You know, they kind of made us do it the hard way. And, you know, I think we learned from some mistakes, maybe that UIW game, where we tried to force the issue down uh, down the field whenever UIW was, was playing some soft zone against us. And I thought today we were patient. Uh, we took what the defense was gave us. We were able to put up 47 points. And, uh, you know, I think this is the first time in the Frank Selfo area here at Southeastern that we've ran for more than we've thrown for. Uh, that was certainly a nice adjustment in this game and, and what we had to do to win. No question, Alan. I certainly have to go back and look at that, but I think you may be right on that. And Again, they, you know, Greg Stevens took what was available. And, again, that was the underneath stuff, the, the check downs with the running back, Devontae Williams with a big game, Deron Jones with some catches out of the backfield, also Marcus Cooper. And uh, the wide receiver is not so much of a factor uh, today for Southeastern other than some underneath bubble stuff and quick screen game. But uh, a, a very well jo a good job all the way around. The offensive line I thought played very well. No sacks of the Southeastern quarterbacks today. Both quarterbacks very efficient. Didn't throw for a lot of yardage. But uh, as we take a look at it, uh, Robbie, uh, you were 15 out of 21 and 11 out of 12 for your quarterbacks. That's a good day. Go ahead and take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back. We'll talk more about this one. Southeastern wins it 47 to 30 back in two minutes on the Bud Light Post Game Show on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. Padello. What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit.
Mark Willoughby, Robbie Rhodes, Alan Waddell with you. Southeastern victorious this afternoon and early evening versus uh, a very game Stephen F. Austin team, 47 to 30. Lions up their overall record to five and three on the year, and uh, go to four and two in conference play, and sets up a big showdown next week against Central Arkansas. But before we talk about that game, let's run down the final statistics in this ball game for you. First downs, SFA had 27 in the ball game to 24 for Southeastern. Uh, Lumberjacks rushed it 30 times for 68 yards. Southeastern uh, just 34 carries, but 222 yards on the ground tonight. Uh, very good uh, afternoon on the ground running the football. SFA did their damage to the air. They were 30 out of 45 for 403 yards and uh, two interceptions. Also had a couple of touchdown tosses to their credit. Uh, Southeastern uh, threw it 33 times. That's a low total for them. But every time they've thrown it under 40 times this year, they've won the football game. Completed 26, 26 of them, but only 199 yards. Uh, did have a couple of touchdown tosses, one each from Jason Virgil and one from Cole Kelly. Uh, were picked off once. That was a tip ball. That really wasn't the fault of anybody. But um, Southeastern, just not a big factor through the air, but they, they were efficient, had the check downs to Devontae Williams, the running backs, quick screen game to the to wide receivers, but uh, took what SFA gave them and were able to score 47 points in this one. Uh, kickoff return, 6 for 120 for SFA, 2 for 50 for Southeastern. Uh, Southeastern had two interceptions today. Uh, one of them went uh, back to the house, 65-yard return by Orlando Jordan, his third of the year, to set a Southeastern record with his third pick six of the season. The other interception was Xavier Lewis, who didn't play much in the second half when he came out due to an injury, and SFA had one interception in the ball game. Uh, Austin Dunlap, another uh, nice, after, a nice afternoon punting the football, three punts for a 46-yard average. Uh, that may put him or come close to putting him in first place all time. Uh, in a single season punt in southeastern history. Scott Center, I think, averaged right uh, at 44 yards a punt uh, way back when in the 80s. And Austin Dunlap is right there near 44 yards per punt after today. Uh, Lumberjacks fumbled it twice, did not lose any. Southeastern did not fumble today. Penalties, uh, both teams uh, kept those in check. SFA had six penalties, 60 yards. Southeastern, seven penalties for 56 yards. Time of possession. 30 minutes, 25 seconds for SFA. Southeastern possessed it 29 minutes and 35 seconds. There's one stat that probably won't make Frank Selfo very happy. That's third down conversion. Southeastern came in leading the Southland Conference in third down conversions, just two of nine today. SFA four out of 11. However, the Lions were three of three on fourth down, and SFA was one of two. Southeastern six of six in the red zone, all touchdowns. Uh, today, so again, Southeastern, the best red zone team in the Southland Conference, and uh, today showed why SFA also four of four in the red zone. Individually, Devontae Williams only carried it eight times today, but had 65 yards, averaging 8.1 yards per carry along of 21. Cole Kelly, uh, the backup quarterback, came in, ran it eight times for 46 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Isaac Berglund had the fake punt for 36 yards, and Teron Jones, 10 carries for a hard-earned 32 yards and a touchdown. Uh, in the passing game, Jason Virgil, 15 out of 21 for 122, a touchdown and an interception. Cole Kelly, 11 out of 12 for 77 yards, a touchdown and no interceptions. Devontae Williams, 11 catches for 71 yards and a touchdown. C.J. Turner, just three catches today, 34 yards. Austin Mitchell uh, touched it twice for 25 and a touchdown. Ed McGee, two catches for 14 yards. Austin Dunlap, three punts for 46-yard average. And Donnell Ward-McGee and Trey Drake led the way with seven tackles apiece. Yeah, Mark, let's take a look at how the drives happened scoring-wise. Southeastern got on the board first with a Cole Kelly three-yard touchdown run with 6.37 to go in the first quarter. The PAT was uh, missed there. Lions went up 6 nothing. They came back uh, down the field and scored again with 3.53 to go in the first quarter. Ed McGee with a eight-yard touchdown run. Bruce Sarver would make the extra point to go up 13 nothing. As if they would come right back as... Uh, the uh, touchdown pass from Trey Self. Extra point was good to make it a 13-7 football game. Cole Kelly would take it in from one yard out with 4.04 to go in the second quarter to make the game 19-7. Lions had the lead. And then uh, Storm Ruiz kicked the 29-yard field goal as the half ended to go into the locker room with a 19-10 Southeastern lead to start the third quarter. 
It was McGovern with a two-yard run. Storm Ruiz added the PAT, made it 19-17, the closest the Lumberjacks would get to Southeastern today. Devontae Williams would come right back with a two-yard touchdown run at the 441 mark of the third quarter to make it 26-17. Austin Mitchell would catch a 15-yard pass from Jason Berger with 126 to go in the third quarter to stretch the lead to 33-17. Xavier Gibson would catch a 15-yard pass from Trey Self to make it a 33-23 game, 10 points at the 13-34 mark of the fourth quarter. But Orlando Jordan would come back and maybe seal the game right there with that 65-yard interception with pass as Bryce Bruce Hart added the PAT to make it a 40-23 game. The uh, Lumberjacks would go to the bench to their back of quarterback Cam Arnold who would lead a drive down the field and find Cobb for a 20-yard touchdown pass to make it a 40-30 football game with 5.31 to go in the contest. And the Lions will seal it off with, a 37, with 37 seconds left in the game. Teron Jones from one yard out. Bryce Bruchard at the PAT. 47-30. The Lions win it. That's how it happened today. Mark will go ahead and take our final two-minute timeout and come back and wrap it up from Strawberry Stadium. This is Budley Post Game Show on the Southeastern Sports Radio Network. What opportunity has Southeastern provided you that you will forever be thankful for? Southeastern has given me the education I need for my future. Whether or not I go pro, I know I'm going to be successful. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are...